Ringo TV reactions. We back again with another one. You already don't know what it is. Make sure you click that like button. Subscribe today. Let's get to work. We got a lot of things to cover. We're dealing with Kirk Franklin. Yeah. We back again with another master class. Make sure you pull up a chair. Uh, get your notepads because we about to go to work. Um, you already don't know how it is. As soon as you come into the stream, just click the like button one time because you're on the best reactionary channel on YouTube. Understand that. Nobody brings out the material, breaks it down, and is 100% thorough like Ringo TV. That's a fact. So as you enter the building, just cl kindly click that like button so we could keep the engagement high. Now, what we're doing is a case study on Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin finally admit he supports homosexuality. Yes, that's right. Kirk Franklin, Christian artist, author, has been in the Christian community for a long time, done a lot of questionable things. And I noticed that he fell from grace I noticed that he's trying his best to, uh, I guess, make the rainbow community comfortable. Now, let's set the ground rules before we been, begin the class. Um, if you're a person who live the alternative life, understand something. I don't support that life. This is America, right? I don't support the alternative life. I, Ringo TV, support the Bible. I stand for truth, which means if it's not thus saith the Lord, then I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Do you understand? What you choose to do in your own private time behind closed doors, that's your personal business. I could really care less. But don't come up in here thinking that it's your job and responsibility in life that your job is to make me agree with what you do when it goes against the scriptures. Do you understand? So if you want to choose to walk down that path, then go ahead, do what you want to do. But just know that it's not the will of God. See, I'm not like these so-called Christians that they refuse to teach the truth, but they want to sing and dance and write books and act like they love and care about you, but they really don't. They just after the bag. See, if you're a brother and you are struggling in the rainbow community and you refuse to repent, there's consequences. There are consequences. If you're a sister and you playing this game, thinking that, well, I could be in the church and still be in this lifestyle, and you think you're going to make it to the kingdom, it's not going to happen. See, your pastor lied to you. Your mama lied to you. Everybody's lying to you. And what Christendom has done is they have warded down the message and now they made it this ideology of, well, if you tell someone from the rainbow community that what they're doing is wrong, then that means you don't love them. That means that you're hateful. That means that you're attacking them. This is what Christendom has done. So what's happening is people are in their sins on their way to hell. And Kirk knows this, but he don't care because he's on his way to hell. He already sold his soul to the devil a long time ago. 
And that's what a lot of y'all don't understand. Now, when you come into this building, understand that I'm going to get down the business. I actually open the Bible and I show you what it says. I'm going to show you based on scripture that Kirk Franklin work for the devil. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you by his own words that Kirk Franklin is evil. Yeah, he don't care about you. And he definitely don't care about the rainbow community. He don't. But he's going to use you to get that bag because he made a pack with the devil. So now, again, as you come into the stream, just get those likes up one time because I guarantee you. I'm going to keep your attention on this truth and you're going to wake up. And if you don't want to wake up, it's because you're with the devil, too, and you refuse but make no mistake, after this live stream, you have no excuse. Because once you encounter an experience with Ringo TV, your eyes are supposed to open up. Because I actually teach the raw, uncut, unadulterated truth that cannot be debated. You understand? You can't make no excuses after viewing this live show. So without further ado, we're going to get into this thing and understand, like I said, if you're a part of that community and you want to go out there and sleep with whoever you want to do, that's on you. But that doesn't mean I have to support that mess because I don't. I support a man and a woman building a family. That's it. There's no in-betweens. There's no... Uh, other lifestyles, none of that stuff is in the scriptures. So I don't support none of that. And just because I don't support none of that, that doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. That doesn't mean that I'm mean. It means that I follow God. So if you want to follow Satan, then that's your business. But don't try to make me out to be a bad guy because I'm not like Kirk Franklin. See, Kirk Franklin sold his soul to Satan so he's going to do everything he can to tickle your ears and make you believe that he loves you Kirk Franklin sold his soul he gotta he gotta give payment to the devil and he's trying to get as many souls locked into the kingdom of darkness because that's his agreement that he made with the devil he made an agreement to send many people to hell in exchange for fortune and fame. Do you understand me? So now we're going to break down four videos proven and showing you line upon line that Kirk Franklin supports homosexuality. We're going to also show that he fell from grace we're going to also prove that he is a liar. We're going to also prove that he's a false teacher, false prophet, and his mouth should be stopped because he's evil. And there are many guys just like him in Christendom that are fleecing the flock with lies. So let's get the show going. Salute to everybody in the chat, everybody coming in the building. Appreciate everybody stopping by. Right? Let's get this thing going. Because somebody got to do the dirty work, right? Somebody got to somebody got to do something here. Somebody got to make this thing known because if if I don't teach and share this truth, you're going to walk away blind and I don't want you to be blind so now again we're going to review four video clips we're going to judge Kirk Franklin by his own words so to all you so called religious Christians that don't read the Bible that love saying stuff like judge not why are you here judging me the Bible don't say you can't judge the Bible says don't judge in hypocrisy. See, this is the problem with Christians. They say judge not because they are living in sin. 
and they don't want to be held accountable. The Bible says, judge not in hypocrisy, which mean if you're an adulterer, I shouldn't be trying to judge you if I'm an adulterer too. That would make me a hypocrite. Do you understand? You have no business judging someone when you're practicing the same sin. You cannot judge a liar for being a liar when you're a damn liar yourself. That's what the Bible means. That's why the Bible says, why behold if the mote that is in your brother's eye when you got a beam in your own eye? Do you understand? That's what it mean by judge not lest you be judged. It don't mean you can't judge nobody because if that's the case, why do we got courts? Why when you got an issue, you go get on a lawyer? Why do you go to a judge? Why do you do these things? Why, before you hire somebody to fork on your house, you make sure you check their background? Why, when you hire a babysitter, you, in, you literally inquire about their history? Why? Because you're judging them. You understand? Everything in life we judge. So let's not be dumb and stupid. Do you understand me? You're an adult. So as you pull up into the classroom, take a seat because the professor is about to go to work. Do you understand me? It's high time and too many people are going to hell because they're playing church. Kirk Franklin have the opportunity to save millions of lives and rather than him give people the gospel, he warded it down, made it convenient. And I'm gonna show you how the world loves Kirk Franklin. And if the world love you, it's because you're of the devil. There's no other way. Now I'm going to show you this. Let's get into this tape. Let's break this thing down. And again, if you want to hear the full message to understand it, you got to listen from the beginning to the end. You can't be one of these people with a short attention span that watch five minutes, then already they bored. Oh, I got five minutes. I can't. He ain't talking. He's talking too much. I'm leaving. That's the kind of person that's going to hell fire. That's the person. Anytime you have a short, that's why the devil loves people with short attention spans. Why do you think YouTube made YouTube shorts? Why do you think they did that? Because they're following TikTok and they realize that most people in this culture have a short attention span for entertainment. But when it comes to truth, you wouldn't even sit 20 minutes to learn a damn thing. And you wondering why you going to hell. You wondering why. So if you want to learn anything, sit in this damn class and listen to the whole message from the beginning to the end. Because I'm about to go to work. These kind of live streams right now goes back to my traditional content of exposing these false prophets and these wicked men that are lying to you. Let's begin. <laughs> what about ho now? What about homosexuality and religion? I know that's been a, a common theme that people have been talking about. They even did a special on it as well on VH1. And then you think you think you could pray the gay away? This people is what I want to say. That. Is that what what I would like to say is that I want to apologize for all of the uh, the horrible things that have been said throughout this just many decades in church culture, uh, you know, just about gay people, just the way that we have d dehumanized them in church, how we've used their talents, but, um, you know, we, we, we do the whole Adam and Steve and, and, uh, you know, and, you know, just all of this, just all of this horrible stuff we've done. Notice what he's doing. Notice how he's apologizing and bowing his knee and said that we use them for their talents. I never use no gay person for their talents the christian church did because the christian church supports it do you see this he starts off by apologizing where in the bible have you seen the most high 
apologize to people that do wickedness. When have you seen that? You understand? Shout out to Trendin with Sharice for the super chat. New Breed, Global Truth for the super chat. Vaughn for the super chat. Deborah for the super chat. Um, let me see what we got here. Trendin says, speak the truth, Ringo TV, 100%. New Breed said, get the likes up. Get the likes up, y'all, and make sure you have support to brother New Breed's channel, too. He's another brother in the truth, another powerful brother in the truth that put in the work of the Most High. So make sure you go over there. You understand? It's crazy. I'm seeing some nonsense about copyright audio and all this other mess. I don't give a damn about none of that. We're going to put this work. We're going to do this work. We're going to, soon as soon as they hear me start getting into this truth, all of a sudden now they want to have these little things. Let me let me post this up real quick so y'all can see this thing so y'all know I'm not lying. Let me see if I can do this thing real fast. But we're going to take care of all of that nonsense about temper. Your stream uh, may be temporarily blocked and all this other BS. Anytime you try to bring out the truth of the most high is when the devil want to show his ugly face. It doesn't matter. We're going to put this truth out. It doesn't matter. And if anything, I just throw it up on Patreon because I don't got no time for this nonsense. For real, real talk. Let me see if I can show this to you just so you can see how the devil don't want you to get this truth. Check this out, fam. Check that out right there. It says, heads up, we've detected copyright audio and video in your stream. Your stream may be temporary blocked. Notice that I didn't even begin the stream yet. I didn't even begin the stream yet. And the devil is trying his best. Wow. <laughs> you see, ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when you got this truth coming, man. I didn't even begin and the devil is already nervous. I didn't even begin and the devil is ready to rock and roll. Let's rock. Let's go. Let's get back into this tape, fam, because we got a lot of work to cover. Let's go. Now, does the Bible say things about um, uh, about heterosexuality, homosexuality. Does it talk about our sexuality? Yes, it does. And the Bible does say that. Kirk didn't write the Bible. So so Kirk is not uh, 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 one trying to say that this is Kirk's way. Mm -hmm. God has established a way because he loves all of us. He's established in his book. And if you choose to believe his word, that, 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 that he has a plan for all of our lives. And because I must trust that he knows what's best for us. Notice how he's dancing. Notice how he's not getting to the point. Look at what the brother asked. They asked about homosexuality. That's what they asked about. But notice how he's dancing. Listen. <laughs> what about now? What about homosexuality? What about homosexuality? Now remember, this woman that you see here. I believe her name is uh, what is her name? Angela, or whatever her name is. She dabbles in that. Do you understand me? I recall seeing her on some show they got, some some podcast I see on YouTube, whatever the case is, and, and she be having women up there and all of them be talking about how they had experiences with other women and all sorts of dirt. So she's involved in that mess. So what Kirk is going to do, which is typical of Christians, is they try not to be offensive and they try to be inclusive and they try to, I guess, sugarcoat, water down everything to be accepted because it's all about the almighty dollar. Notice what she asks for. Listen. <laughs> what about now? What about homosexuality and religion? I know that's been a, a common theme that people have been talking about. They even did a special on it as well on VH1. And then you think you think you can pray the gay away? This people is what I want to say. Is that what what I would like to say is that I want to apologize for all of the uh, rather than just answering the question, he goes to apologizing. Think about that. Rather than apologizing, he goes, ra rather than getting to the point of answering the question, he's more focused on apologizing to a particular community. Shout out to Romel, uh, Romel for the five on the cash app, Vic for the 999. Said, let's go, Ringo TV, always ready for the truth. Um, Key Prosper Israel uh, for the five says, blessings to you, Ringo. Love your deep truth teachings. Um, let me see. Shout out to you don't know. Uh, what's that? You don't know my 
I, I'm not sure. It's like missing part of your name. I don't know. It must be a long name, but appreciate you for the five dollar support. Um, notice this. Kirk cannot just simply answer. He's going through a whole dance routine. Now, again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of a powerful live stream. This live stream is supposed to set the captives free. The devil is already trying his best in the background. But it doesn't matter. We are going to get this truth out there. Let's get this thing going. The horrible things that have been said throughout just just many decades in church culture, uh, you know, just about gay people, just the way that we have d d humanized them in church, how we've used their talents. But um, you notice know. he said the church used their talents. So all these Christian churches are guilty, but he's apologizing for this. We 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 do the whole Adam, and which which again proved my point in many of my lessons where I talk about how the majority of the musicians, the singers and the talents that are in these churches in the choir is all gay people. Yeah, I must understand that in the Christian church, all of the talent that is on that stage, the singers, the uh, the vocalist, the, the organ player, the piano player, the guitar player, all of them, the pastor know what they do but he don't care. You have to understand this. Let's get back to the tape. Steve and, and you know, and, you know, just all of this, just all of this horrible stuff we've done. Now, does the Bible say things about, um, uh, about heterosexuality, homosexuality? Does it talk about our sexuality? Yes, it does. And yes, it does. But they ask you about homosexuality. They didn't ask you about heterosexuals. He's dancing around the truth. Let's go. The Bible does say that Kirk didn't write the Bible. So so Kirk is not uh, 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 one trying to say that this is Kirk's way. Notice he's trying to distance himself from the Bible. He's ashamed to share the truth. He's ashamed to reveal what thus saith the Lord. He don't want to reveal anything. So he's like, look, don't get mad at me. It's not me. It's not this. I, I didn't say nothing. It's the Bible. God has established a way because he loves all of us. He's established in his book. And if you choose to believe his word, that, 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 that he has a plan for all of our lives. And because I must trust that he knows what's best for us, that in his love and his truth, that he will walk out. If he know what's best for us, why don't you just tell the people what the truth is if he knows what's best for us? Kirk Franklin is a false prophet. Serious. Seriously, y'all, let's go. The way that that all of us are to carry our lives mm -hmm. through His Word, all of us. Because see, see, the problem is, is that we make the Bible this attack manual against gay people. Wow! And the Bible is not an attack manual against gay people. Notice what he just said: that we make the Bible an attack manual against gay people. Notice what he just did right there. The Bible attacks sin. What is he talking about? The whole Bible attacks sin. Notice how he's supporting homosexuality. He's literally defending the sin of homosexuality by saying that the Bible is not an attack manual against homosexuality. That's what Kirk Franklin just said. And now what that does, it makes it very difficult for people like me, you know, men of truth that actually teach. It makes it difficult for us to actually reach people because as soon as they hear us open the Bible, the first thing they think is, oh, he's attacking us. I cannot attack you. You're going to hell anyway. I mean, do you really think you're going to get into heaven with your sin? No, it's not going to happen. The Bible says that we brought nothing into this world and we're not going to take anything out. So all of the money you gain, all of the possessions you gain, all of the riches and everything you have acquired in this life, you are not going to take it when you die. You're just not. It doesn't matter what you earned. You, once, once your clock ends, once your heartbeat stops, everything you acquired in this earth remains here. It's not coming with you. So what makes you think you're going to get into the kingdom of, of God with your sin? Kirk Franklin don't love people. He hates them. See, the true hater, the true one who is attacking is Kirk. He's attacking the truth 
of the Most High because he do not want people to come to God. He do not want you to be saved. He want you to go to hell. That's what Kirk Franklin want. Because if he really believed in God, he would be giving you the truth raw and uncut the way I am right now. Let's get back to the tapes. Let's go. What does the Bible say about homosexuality? He asks, what does the Bible say about homosexuality? Now, it should be a clear-cut answer. What does the Bible say about homosexuality? Why can't Kirk Franklin answer the question? Let's look at him dance. The same thing it says about heterosexuality. Wow. The brother asks, what does the Bible say about homosexuality? Kirk Franklin said the same thing it says about heterosexuality. Do you see how he's dancing? That it says that sexuality is supposed to be in the confine. Now, again, this is what the Bible says. Wow. Now, you know, because, again, you know, Kirk Franklin does not want to come. Because I think what preachers have done wrong is that we make the Bible or we talk like we we are the authority. Right. Wow. Kirk Franklin ain't the authority. Right. I'm not the authority, dude. You know. Do you see what he's doing here? He said Kirk Franklin is not the authority. Didn't the Messiah give you authority to cast out devils? Didn't the Messiah give you the authority to raise the dead, to heal the sick? Didn't he give you the authority? He just said he don't got no authority. Isn't that crazy? The Messiah gave us the authority to preach this word. He, he gave us the authority to preach this word in season, out of season, whether people like it, don't like it, it doesn't matter. Your job is to give them the truth. You understand? It is what it is, fam. Let's go. I'm just an ex-sinner saved by grace. I'm just a, you know, a man who fell in love with Jesus one day, right? He said he's an ex-sinner who was saved by grace. Let's go. That's all I am. And so the Bible talks about our sexuality within the confines is that whether it's adultery, mm -hmm. it's clear on adultery, it's clear on fornication. Notice how he's talking about adultery, fornication. The man asks, what does the Bible say about homosexuality? He ain't asked you about all these other sins that are in the Bible. Just get to the point, bro. You know what I mean? He supports it, fam. Let's go. It's close sexuality. And so... But I guess with homosexuality, it says it's an abomination. Like no, 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 no. Notice how when the brother said that homosexuality is a, an abomination according to the Bible, notice how he's like, no, 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 no. Why he's doing that if he rep God? What is the matter with him? Leviticus 18.22, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Why Kirk Franklin can't say that? Why? Notice that, fam. Let's rewind back the tape a little bit. Let's go. But homosexuality says it's an abomination. Like no, 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 no. I'm with you. Yeah, 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 no, no. Yeah, yeah, but, well, well, you know, well, well, the eating shellfish is too, you know, yep. and the Levitical law. Yeah. Notice how he's talking about shellfish. Think about that. What is he talking about shellfish now? When these Christians, all they do is eat shrimp, lobster, crab legs, ham sandwiches. They continually eat all of that mess. You know what I mean? The man just, notice, Charlemagne, no more Bible than Kirk Franklin. Charlemagne, let me tell you something about the world. The world know the scriptures too. They're just seeing that Kirk Franklin is not really repping the most high. He's one of them, guys. Let's go. Yeah, yep. but 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 at the same time, yeah, you know, in the New Testament, because see, that's a Levitical law, that's Old Testament law, but, but in the New Testament, yeah, you know, when you read Paul's letters, you know, he's very clear about about what the Bible says about our sexuality. But again, it is not a mandate. The Bible is not talking about all these things Kirk is saying here about the Bible. It's talking about, you know, Paul's talking about our sexuality and all this stuff. Paul was talking about the sin of homosexuality, the abomination. There's a difference between an abomination when something is a regular sin. When the Most High calls something an abomination, fam, he's disgusted. Do you understand? It goes way deep, way deep, but he's ignoring these things. Let's go. Eight to attack gay people. Right. Listen to what he said. I'm gonna rewind it back. I'm gonna rewind it back. Let's go. 
Yeah, 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 but well, well, you know, well, well, the eating shellfish is too, you know, yep. in the Levitical eating law. Well. Yeah, yeah, yep. but, but, but at the same time, yeah, you know, in the New Testament, because see, that's a Levitical law, that's Old Testament law, but, but in the New Testament, yeah, you know, when you read Paul's letters, you know, he's very clear about about what the Bible says about our sexuality. But again, it is not a mandate to attack gay people. Right. Wow. If, if you're going to attack gay people, you got to attack adulterers. So notice, notice what he's doing here, y'all. Notice what Kirk is doing here. Kirk Franklin is weaponizing homosexuality and the, the rainbow community against believers. How is teaching somebody the truth attacking gay people? Did I speak or uttered anything for others to harm anyone? No. I'm simply sharing commentary and criticism. Right? When you go to the courthouse, don't they make you swear on a Bible? Right? Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? But this same nation uphold that which the Bible speaks against. This is why when you go to these courts, it's a joke. They're all jokes. He's basically saying that if you teach or share anything from the Bible, it means you're attacking people. And you're wondering why in these churches, nobody's saved. And the, the, and the Christian church is filled. Think about what I'm saying here, fam. The Christian church is filled filled with predominantly people that live the alternative lifestyle. It has become a haven for them to go because the church make everything comfortable. The church make them feel good and they all believe they're going to heaven when they're not. And the pastor gets rich off of lies. Imagine all these people are living the alternative lifestyle and the pastor refused to teach them. Imagine if you are one living the alternative lifestyle and in your church, your pastor make you feel so comfortable that you don't think you need to change or repent. You really believe God loves you. No, he don't. I'm the first to tell you this. He don't. If you are living in sin, he don't love you. You're not going to make it. It's just that simple. I'm not going to sit here and, and sugarcoat this. Seriously, fam. Listen, you can have children that are your blood if your children are rebellious and wicked. You're not going to grant them access to all the blessings. You're not. Because they are wicked and rebellious. Same thing with the Most High. Don't ever think that you're going to make it to the kingdom and you living for the devil. It's not going to work. Let's get back to the tapes. New Testament, yeah, you know, when you read Paul's letters, you know, he's very clear about, uh, uh, about what the Bible says about our sexuality. But again, it is not a mandate to attack gay people. Right. Wow. If, if you're going to attack gay people, you got to attack adulterers. There's so you many know? sins in the Bible. You've got to attack fornicators, yeah. yeah. And the Bible says that they're all sins. Yeah. And then, guess what? The great news is, whatever the sin is, grace is greater. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that with sin increased, grace increased all the more. And wow. Notice what he said right there. Listen to him again. So I get excited because, again, I'm the top dude on sin, man. I was so jacked up and still every day, man, I'm in need of grace. Were you so like the a killer grace in the streets, Kirk? Like a, like a, <laughs> like, right? Now, you heard what he just said right here. Let's rewind it back, play it again, and I'm going to bring out the scriptures because he's not bringing out the scriptures. We're going to bring them out. And then, guess what? The great news is, whatever the sin is, grace is greater. Mm. He said grace is greater. Let's find out from the Bible what it says about grace. Let's see what we could find from the scriptures. Because for some reason, it's like people don't understand how this thing works. But we're going to see what's going on here. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can bring this up. Um, let me see. Let me see. Is this it? Here we go. Uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 16. We're going to read all of it. Because here on Ringo TV Reactions, we actually open the Bible because we realize that the word of the most high is the most important thing in this lifetime. Uh, just the other day, you had Big Pokey. He just pretty much passed out and died while performing. He was about to perform and he died. All of you folks, all 600 of you that are in the building right now, be sure to click that like button. 
We don't want you to pass away suddenly and end up in hell fire. Learn to take heed to these messages from the men of the Most High. A man lost his life yesterday. He was performing, doing what he loved. He picked up the microphone and then he gave up the ghost and he died. And everybody was in shock. The devil do not want you to hear this message and wake up. Do you understand me? Let's read the scriptures. Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 16 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Are you getting that? Are you getting that? Now listen. Listen to what Kirk Franklin said. Let's go. Yeah, you know, in the New Testament, because see, that's a Levitical law, that's Old Testament law. But, but in the New Testament, yeah, you know, when you read Paul's letters, you know, he's very clear about about what the Bible says about our sexuality. But again, it is not a mandate to attack gay people. Right. If, if you're going to attack gay people, you got to attack adulterers. There's so you many know, sins in the mm -hmm. Bible. You've got to attack four. Nobody's attacking anybody. Kirk is using the word attack because he's trying to demonize people that actually stand for the truth. Kirk loves making people comfortable in their sin so he can make money off of them. Fornicators, yeah. yeah. And the Bible says that they're all sins. Yeah. And then, guess what? The great news is, whatever the sin is, grace is greater. Mm -hmm. The Bible. He said grace is greater. Says that with sin increased, grace increased all the more. So we should basically increase our sin so grace can continue. Again, let's go back to the scriptures. Let's go back to the scriptures. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized in Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should serve, we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. He that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Do you see that? So based upon the scriptures, ladies and gentlemen, this brother is basically saying that it's okay to sin because of grace. The writer says, God forbid. In other words, if you think this is a license to sin, you have something coming. Because verse 16 sums it up. It says, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, 
his servants ye are. So if you're still practicing homosexuality and you're in church talking about you love Jesus, the Bible is basically telling you that you're going to hell. You're going to hell. There's no other way around it. Why? Because you're still a servant of sin. If you are truly with Christ, you should have been dead to those sins. But you're not because you're still fulfilling the lust of the, of the flesh. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Verse 12 says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So how can you be a Christian? How can you be a believer in God, be in the church, cranking up the organ, and then right after church, you in bed with the same sex trying to get it in? Come on now. But again, Kirk Franklin, he don't love you, and he's not going to give you the truth. He's going to lie to you. Here on Ringo TV Reactions, we're going to give you the truth raw and uncut. You may not like me. You may not like my delivery. You may not like nothing. You better be accustomed to how I talk because I'm telling you and I promise you, if you were to stand in front of God right now, you will be terrified because he's not going to talk to you the way I am. It's going to just be judgment straight up. It ain't going to be no, uh, oh, I'm going to be patient with you. I'm going to talk to you all nice and I'm going to give you a chance. When your day is up, when you leave this earthly realm, and you are now in the spirit realm. You lost your ability to choose. You cannot make a choice anymore. And for whatever reason now, you're gonna reap what you sown. Let's get back to the tapes. And that's why I get excited because again, I'm the top dude on sin, man. Wow. I was so jacked up and still every day, man, I'm in need of grace. Well, you so like the great in the streets, Kirk? Like a like a I'm too <laughs> check my pockets. But see, but that's what's so dope about <laughs> the truth though, my dude. Notice how he making them feel comfortable. Notice how comfortable they are. They are so comfortable listening into Kirk. They're like, man, Kirk, you're so cool. You're this. See, if I was on their show, if they was interviewing me, I will just be throwing scriptures at them. They'll they'll just get me off of the show and they'll say that I'm uh, self-righteous, that I'm holier than thou, that I think I'm perfect. All of these labels they'll give you. Watch how they treat and give Kirk Franklin the red carpet treatment. Check it out. The, the, the truth about God's word is, is that there is no bigger little sin. So if I was a killer with a gun or killer with my tongue. Notice what the Bible says. Let's read. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10 from the New Living Translation, it says, Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Do you see that? But is Kirk Franklin bringing out, thus saith the Lord? Of course not. He don't care. I was still a killer. Mm -hmm. We like a girl that's a killer with her tongue, by the way. Wow. <laughs> wow. I was talking about lying and talking about people hurting people. Wow. Like no, no, but it's all good. <laughs> it 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 in, man. Now, check it out. Watch this now. Watch this, guys. Watch this, sisters. Check this out. Like, no, man. Reason, no, like, this you, is an honor to be here, man. Real talk. Like you, Kirk, though, is because you're not preachy. You know what I'm saying? And you're not coming off as perfect. And I think that when people deliver the message in that way, it's easier to digest. Wow. 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 Did you hear what Charlemagne just said? Did you just hear what he said, fam? He basically congratulated Kirk by saying, the reason why I like you is because you don't come across preachy and you don't come across as if though you're perfect. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a believer in the most high and the world accept you like that, that's a clear sign that you're not with God. That mean that you need to get in the presence of the most high fast and try to figure out what's wrong with why the world feel so comfortable around you. If I'm around people that are wicked, they're supposed to be uncomfortable when I enter the room. You understand? Because they recognize that I'm going to be thorough with this word. Let's go. It's like, it's not like you, Kirk, though, it's because you're not preachy. 
Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? And you're not coming off as perfect. And I think that when people deliver the message in that way, it's easier to digest. Wow. So you want to hear a message that is easy to digest. Do you see what's going on in the world, fam? Do you see why it's so difficult to reach people with the truth? Because they don't want to hear the raw, uncut truth. They want truth that is easy to digest. You know how how when you have children, it's sometimes difficult to give them their vegetables. They they re- they rather eat candy than eat their vegetables. You know why? You know why it's so difficult as a parent to give your children the proper nutrition and the vegetables and everything they need because you spoil them. Because you raise them on candy, potato chips and junk food and then you try to give them the nutritional food. And now it becomes bad to them. They see the good food as bad, but they want the bad food instead. How many of you have kids and your kids would rather eat lollipops and potato chips rather than eating their greens? Ah, that's nasty. I don't want that. Well, that's exactly what Charlemagne is saying here. That the way Kirk talks, he makes people feel comfortable. If I'm making you feel comfortable in your sin, I'm not doing the will of the Most High. That means I need to repent because that means I'm trying to make you feel comfortable so you can like me because I don't want you to think that I'm judging you. You understand? And I'm never going to be that kind of guy because when this life is over, when I close my eyes, when my time is up, I got to answer to the most high, especially with a platform. If you're a content creator and you got a platform and you are not speaking, thus saith the most high, I don't care what your channel is. I don't care what you do. If you're successful at whatever you do and you are not Speaking of the word of the most high in no capacity, the most high going to judge you, bro. Because if you have a following, you could be reaching them with this truth. Kirk Franklin have a following of millions on his YouTube channel. Is he reaching the people for the most high? No. He's keeping them and reaching the people for Satan. Let's go. And real like talk. you Kirk do is because you're not preachy. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And you're not coming off as perfect. And I think that when people deliver the message in that way, it's easier to digest. Wow. Like one of us. I heard him use yeah. that word. And then did you hear what? Did you hear what the brother said? That Kirk Franklin is one of us. Did you hear that? Listen to this. Bar this brother got, got on. Jets. He seems like one of us. I heard him use yeah. the N word and it didn't bother. This brother got, got on. Jets. He seems like one of us. I heard him use yeah. the N word and it didn't bother. Wow. This brother got on. Jets. He seems like one of us. I heard him wow. use the N word and it didn't bother. This brother got on. Hey, what's up, you guys? You're watching thegrio.com. I'm Chris Witherspoon, and right now I am so happy because I'm sitting down with. Now notice how Kirk Franklin is cheesing, having a good time, promoting his albums, promoting his work, and notice what he's doing now keep this in mind ladies and gentlemen remember that shirt remember that shirt does does that shirt that kirk franklin look familiar see i do my research when i tell you when i do these breakdowns i do my research notice the shirt that he have on now notice the shirt that he have on right there you see that notice that you see the shirt you see the shirt (laughs) Looked like Kirk Franklin was on tour. And it seemed like every conversation from all of these different shows all was to promote his love for homosexuality and his support for homosexuality to make the community feel good about him. This is what he's doing. He's on tour, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out. Let's break this thing down. Remember that shirt. Check it out. I heard him use yeah. the N-word and it didn't bother. His brother got on. Yes. He seems like one of us. He's one of them. I heard him use yeah. the N-word and it didn't bother. His brother got on. Hey, what's up, you guys? You're watching thegrio.com. That mean right after he left from the breakfast club, he went to this guy right here to once again promote what he's doing and to push a message, a watered down message of acceptance by making it seem as if though If you are in sin, God loves you and you're going to make it to the kingdom when that's not true. Let's go. Chris Witherspoon, and right now I am so happy because I'm sitting down with a gospel legend. Wow. Somebody who who I've been listening to and bumping to for for many years, inspired by you. Do you see what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Do you see what we got to deal with? Is Kirk Franklin preaching to this brother the gospel? No, he's happy. He's comfortable. See, I wouldn't even be there. Because everybody would know how I move. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just being, a, I'm keeping it a thousand with you. I rep the most high, 100%. Kirk Franklin don't. He represents Satan. Now, pay attention to this particular interview here and listen to Kirk Franklin words, because what we're showing you is that Kirk Franklin finally admits that he supports homosexuality. And these are facts. Let's go. Many years, Kirk Franklin. What's Thank going on, sir? Here. How are you? It's not fair. His chair is a little bit higher than mine. <laughs> no, I'm really, I'm really, really sure. This is all intentional. <laughs> yeah. This but is propaganda. Propaganda. <laughs> but your new album is called Losing My Religion. I love this. His new album is called Losing My Religion. He fell from grace, y'all. Are y'all seeing this? Kirk Franklin fell from grace. He fell from grace, y'all. Isn't it sad? Let's go. I, uh, I love that it's, 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 it's you. Kind of According to the book of John, chapter uh, 15, verse 19, it says, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. See, when you're truly repping the most high, when you truly rep repping the most high, the world is going to hate you. That's just natural. It ain't, it ain't nothing to me when unbelievers hate me. I don't really care because they're supposed to. I represent the most high. But now if I find that the world loves me, even while I'm pushing the truth, I got to check my walk. That means something wrong with me. Something got to be wrong with me because the world is not supposed to like you if you rep the most high. Because you're a shining light. And when you come in, it's like light. And when you come through, it's like turning on the light in a nasty kitchen filled with roaches. As soon as you turn it on, they start to scatter. When a righteous man come around people that are evil, all of a sudden now they want to distance themselves from you. How many of you brothers and sisters been around people and because they know you rep the most high and you're not going to tolerate BS, as soon as you come around, they packing up, ready to go. They don't even want to be around you. They don't even want to be your friend because you're with the most high and they can't tolerate you being near them because every time you are around them, you make them feel uncomfortable and they don't like that. And the only time they want to be your friends is when you make them feel uncomfortable, um, feel comfortable in their sin. That's what they love. Let's get back to the tapes. Maybe evolving in even more. And your new single, I love, Want to Be Happy. I'm bumping to that right now. Now, do you really like it or are you I just really saying it for it. the cameras? I don't like it. I really love it. Really? Notice, he said he loves it. Now, it's very, very clear that the man who is interviewing him is of the alternative persuasion. And he loves Kirk Franklin's music. Why? Because Kirk Franklin's music doesn't challenge him. Do you understand? The word of the Most High should convict you to make you repent of your sins. Matter of fact, if you're watching any of the brothers like New Breed, me, Pastor Dow, uh, Rollo, any of the brothers that's in the truth, that's pushing truth, if you're listening to any of our videos where we go heavy into biblical topics, if it's not tugging at your spirit, if it doesn't convict you about things you're doing wrong, then that means you're, you're, you're reprobate at this point. You're beyond repair. You understand? I could be listening to a sermon from Pastor Dahl and just kind of chilling, doing some work around the house. And he might say something that make me feel like, man, I got to do I got to do better, fam. I, I got to change this about my life. You know what I mean? Why? Because I got the spirit of the most high with me. So if I hear a brother preach, iron's supposed to sharpen iron. So if I feel some sort of way after listening to the brother, it's not for me to get upset and be like, he's judging me. No, it's supposed to make you do better. You know what I mean? That's the whole purpose of preaching and teaching. It's supposed to convict you. So if Kirk is an artist, a minister, and his music is not ministering to the brother that's on the screen to repent from his lifestyle and his sins, then Kirk is not doing his job. That means his music is, is not effective. It's not, it's not producing change. Let's get back to the tapes. Okay. Um, tell folks about this album and, and what the message is you're trying to bring. Tell us about the album. Forget about telling us about the Most High. Let's tell them about the album. It's an honor to be here with you, first of all. Thank you. It's an honor. Kirk said it's an honor to be talking to him. Um, and I am more than anything... 
trying to peel back those layers to keep people away from God. Wow. And keep people away from experiencing th the love of God and knowing God's love as a father. Most people in culture, first of all, they don't really care about anything about God because... Th the reason why they don't care anything about God is because you're not preaching the Bible. You know what I mean? You're not teaching these people. You're not teaching them nothing. You're making them feel happy. And that's what's sad about this whole thing image and portrayals that we've um, kind of presented. See, all this stuff that you see Kirk doing when he do these videos and all this other stuff, it make it seem like he got such a great relationship with the Most High, but he don't. He fell from grace a long time ago. Basically, maybe how we live, how we present him, and, and they have not always been uh, in the space of grace. You see, here he go again with grace. Again, he's talking about grace. Now, what did we learn about grace, y'all? What did we learn? What we learn here is this, fam. Let me break it down. Let's go. It says, again, Romans 6. I'm not going to read the whole thing. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Why Kirk Franklin is not telling that to the gay community? Why he's not doing that? Listen, I'm just asking questions. If Kirk Franklin reps the most high, if Kirk Franklin's supposed to be a Christian, if Kirk Franklin know that he have uh, people that are of the alternative lifestyle, that are his musicians, that are in his churches, that are around him, that are his stylists and so and so forth, why Kirk Franklin is not telling them uh, that they shouldn't continue in their sin? Because continuing your sin is not going to make grace abound more. It's not. It says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Let me tell you something, people, about grace. Grace is not a license to sin. I said grace is not a license to sin. If you're on a nine to five grind, you have a grace period on when you can come to work in terms of being late. Normally, it's a five minute grace period. So let's say you have to be at work at 8 a.m. in the morning, right? It's best that you come in on time at least 15 minutes or 20 minutes before you have to get to work. That way you could kind of get dressed, get in your uniform, unwind, eat a bagel, you know, have your coffee, you know, before you get to work. But there's a grace period. So coming in at eight o'clock, is pretty much ideal but if you come in at 802 803 804 even 805 you won't be marked as late but you don't want to abuse it by coming in at those times do you get my point the grace period is to protect you to give you that extra five minutes so that you don't cross the line but you should never take advantage of the grace period by coming in every day at 803, 804, 805. Because if you do that and you make a habit, there's going to come a day. You're going to come in and you're going to swipe that clock and it's going to swipe and it's going to hit 806. And now you're going to be marked as late. And if you have multiple latenesses on your record, you know what that means. You're going to get in some trouble. Supervisor going to call you in that office. So the grace period was never designed to be abused. But in the church, in Christendom, grace is something that is abused. The preachers, the musicians are telling you that, hey, grace is here for us to sin and have it abundantly because God loves us. But the Bible don't say that. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Meaning, you better not do that. If you're dead to sin, you shouldn't live there any longer. And that's the message that Kirk should be preaching, but he's not. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. Do you understand me? Do you understand? Beware of these false prophets, man. Let's get back to the tapes, man, because this is crazy. This is crazy. We have a lot to cover, fam, a lot. Let's go. And the space of uh, his sovereign and conditional love for all people. And um, I'm trying through this album to 
attempt to erase the dogma and the ideology. He's trying to erase the dogma and the ideology. So his album is an orchestrated CIA operative type mission to brainwash the people into accepting sin, to make them accept the alternative lifestyle. Listen to what he's saying here. That, uh, that gets in the way of the true essence of, you know, just one of the most simplest things that we could ever say to somebody, for God so loved the world. He gave his only son, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the most beautiful love letter that you could give anybody. See what I mean about this love letter, the beautiful, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So, so hold up. He gave his only begotten son so you could live in sin. He gave his only begotten son so that you can go out there and indulge in sin because you believe grace is covering you. No, you got to repent. The Bible teaches us to repent. At no time did you hear Kirk Franklin talk about people repenting. And this is what's going on, fam. The Christian church is full of emotions. That's all they preach is emotions. They never open the Bible. They never teach you to repent. You don't hear nothing from Kirk Franklin teaching that his hope is that people that are living the alternative lifestyle will repent from their sins and turn to God before it's too late. You don't hear him talking like that. Why? Because he's afraid of being canceled. He's afraid of that community coming after him. And that's sad to say you rep God, but you're afraid to preach. Who's in need of an eternal space of love. So I'm trying to erase all of that and say that if we lose religion, we can get to the pure essence. Just like notice he said, if we lose religion, but that's what he practiced. Everything that you see Kirk Franklin doing thus far in these interviews is called religion. What he's saying that the church need to lose is preaching the truth. It's backwards, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think you're understanding. Let me break it down. Listen. Religion. A simple understanding of what being religious mean. In case you're in the building and you just don't know. Being religious or practicing religion means never teaching people the truth. It mean have an image on the outside of serving God, but on the inside and in private, you serve the devil. It mean never correct anyone, because if you do that, it's not loving. That's religion. Being religious mean when somebody's going through something, just say, we'll be praying for you. When really, you never prayed at all. They never prayed. For example, RIP to the brother that passed away yesterday, Big Pokey, condolences to his family. But I noticed that when all of that took place, a lot of people in the comments are saying they'll be praying for the family. They'll be praying for the family. I can promise you none of those people have even uttered a prayer for Pokey's family. None of them. That is what I mean by religious. People say stuff, but they don't do it. They don't stop what they're doing to actually pray. They don't because they don't even serve God. So when you understand what being religious mean, ladies and gentlemen, being religious mean tickle people ears with lies. It means never tell a person that's a homosexual what the Bible says. Don't tell them because if you do, they're going to get offended. And they're going to leave the church. Remember, predominantly all the people that are in these churches are living the alternative lifestyle. They're the ones who keep the lights on. They're the ones who uh, pay their tithes, offerings, and everything else. And also, for the record, you're not supposed to be tithing in a church. If you're a Christian and you're in a church, you're not supposed to be tithing 10% of your income to no pastor. You're not supposed to be doing that. Nowhere in the Bible does it teach you to tithe money to a pastor. Do you understand? The tithe was never money and it never went to no pastor. Read your Bible and stop being dumbed down by these wolves in sheep's clothing. Because the Christian institution have been robbing people forever. The pastor lives in a me mega mansion, flies in a Learjet, 
rides a Rolls Royce while you got to take a skateboard to church. You got to catch the bus to work. You're in the projects while your pastor is in a gated community with a golf course, with a tennis court and a basketball court and a swimming pool and an eight car garage. But you both serve the same Jesus, but for some reason, he's well off and you're not. Let it make sense. The pastor will tell you anytime you're in a problem, you need to sow a seed and believe God for a harvest. But when the pastor has a problem, he don't sow no seed. He come on television and he tell you, please donate so I could buy a Lair jet. All of them are false prophets, including Kirk Franklin. Let's get back to the tapes. Marriage does not guarantee intimacy. Mm -hmm. Religion does not guarantee relationship. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think the album title in itself and even how you talked about it on Instagram and just now even, I think it's, it's, it's so deep. It's a conversation that I think people need to have. Yeah. Um, like you talk about removing the mask. You were saying this on Instagram. Um, there's room for the cross that everyone, even me, religion is a prison. Um, he said religion is a prison. This is what Kirk Franklin said. Religion is a prison. Religion. Now, again, I just told you what religion is. What Kirk Franklin is basically saying, he's flipping it, y'all. He want you to believe that religion mean me teaching you the truth so you can repent. That's not religion. That's me giving you the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High so you could be blessed. Religion is what Kirk Franklin is doing right now. Not teaching you the truth. Not giving you what thus saith the Most High. Do you know how angry the Most High is? Let me tell you something, people. Do you know how angry the Most High is right now? Do you know how pissed off the Most High is with his people? Do you know how furious he is with his fury of his anger that nobody in this earth is preaching the gospel? Do you understand? All you got is a bunch of false prophets out here focusing on getting money while people are dying and going to hell. Nobody's want, listen, nobody want to give you this truth raw and uncut because everybody's afraid. Everybody's afraid of being canceled. From time to time, as a brother in the truth, there comes a time you just got to go full throttle and just pour out the fire. Do you understand me? Kirk Franklin is sitting next to a man that is on his way to the lake of fire. And Kirk Franklin do not care. Instead, he makes him believe that he's good. Isn't that sad? Kirk do not love this brother. Kirk do not care. Look, ladies and gentlemen, there was a time when they were talking about the sin of homosexuality. And they listed it in the medical books as a mental condition, an illness, a disease. It's still in those books. Look it up. And somehow, some way in this United States of America, they made everyone comfortable. And now it's all over the place. It's all over the place. Just the other day, I couldn't believe it. I, my, my, my mind, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm lost for words, bro. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that I know, you know what I'm saying? The brother, uh, his son, his son, fam. You know what I'm saying? I remember this young boy, you know, he was growing up, you know, in the stroller. His son is walking around outside with a weave, blonde, his son. That's right. It's crazy. That's what's going on in today's day. And it's because nobody's teaching the truth. And it's not like he was raising him. The boy was with his mom. And the father always had issues with the baby mama can't see his son, can't be in the son life, could a mom keeping the boy away? The boy is outside. Teenager, like, 
16, 17, with a blonde weave. He's, he, he's gone, bro. You know how that, you, do you know how that brother feel? Do you know how that father feels? <sighs> My goodness, man. This is because nobody's teaching this truth, man. Nobody's out here putting out this word the way it needs to be because everybody hiding. And I appreciate everybody that support via Super Chat. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate everybody. I probably missed a couple of y'all. Um, shout out to the check-in report. Um, says Kirk. Kirk is showing us that money is his God. Yeah, he's definitely doing that. He, he definitely worships money. And there's nothing wrong with having money, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money. The love of it. When you love money to the point where you refuse to give people what the truth is, that means you don't serve God. You can either serve God or mammon, right? It says he know gay people play his music and go to his concerts. The money has replaced saving souls for him. That's a fact. You're, you're on point. And that's another thing with why the Christian church don't preach on these things, because they're getting funded by people that are living the alternative lifestyle. But you, would you believe there are people that live the alternative lifestyle and they watch my show and actually support because they know I'm preaching the truth? You know that? I have people that are living the alternative lifestyle hit me up on Instagram, let me know verbatim that they are struggling with that lifestyle and want to repent. And I, all I can tell them is repent. You know what I'm saying? Watch my videos. Tune in, seek the most high and repent. You know, I mean, I can't grab you by the hand and lead you to the kingdom. All I can do is give you the truth. But see, to those people that actually hit me up and you know where you are. And I know who they are. I'm not going to put them out there. But my point is, and, and these are brothers. You understand what I'm saying? Brothers, men that hit me up to let me know that this is what they're struggling with. And they tell me their, their stories. They tell me exactly what they've been through. And, you know, I have these conversations and I try to lead them in the right way. But I can't sugarcoat this thing. And I tell them, look, you got to repent. You know what I'm saying? You got to turn. I tell them, look, you got to get away from your friends. Get away from all those people that are still in that world because it's going to pull you back in. You know? Like I'm, they'd be like, I'm struggling. I keep going back. I keep on seeing the same person, you know, and I'm like, look, you got to cut them off. It's no different if you want to lose weight. You got to stop eating the foods that are causing the problems. You let go of the sugars. Stop drinking soda. Just cut it off. But when you cut it off, you got to replace it with something that's good. You got to get around people that are supportive of your walk. You know, this is real talk, fam. So if you're a person and you out there and you know who you are, you got to repent. You're not going to make it into the kingdom. Remember, guys, Big Pokey was at an event in Houston, Texas. He's a legendary rapper out in Houston, Texas. All the people out there, they know who he is. Because I remember when I did the video, a lot of people was like, I don't know who that is. Never heard of him. You may not never heard of him, but the people who know him, they had love for him. Now, I'm not here to say, oh, his rap songs is from the most high. I'm not lifting him up like that. I'm trying to be respectful because the brother passed away in our face. He literally dropped dead on camera. We don't want that to happen to you. We would want to make sure that you write with the most high before you check out. Before you leave this earth, we want to make sure that you write with the most high. Because once you check out, there's no you know, making choices in the afterlife. It's just not going to be possible. Shout out to Michelle for the super chat. Appreciate your support. Shout out to Just BN Me for the $19 support. Says you are amazing. Appreciate that. Shout out to Trending with Sharice again for the five. Appreciate your support. Um, and I'm going to hit, I'm going to read those cash apps at the end of the stream. So thus far, what we're hearing here, Kirk Franklin is in full support of homosexuality. He hates the Bible and he refused to open the scriptures to tell people exactly what the Bible says. He don't want to read what the scripture says. 
the preacher isn't God, religion's first mistake. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Let me rewind that back so you can hear what he said. Let me rewind that back. Let's go. This does not guarantee intimacy. Mm-hmm. Religion does not guarantee relationship. Wow. Mm. I think the album title in itself and even how you talked about it on Instagram and just now even, I think it's, it's, it's so deep. It's a conversation that I think people need to have. Yeah. Um, like you talk about removing the mask. You were saying this on Instagram. Um, there's room for the cross that everyone, even me, religion is a prison. Yeah. Um, the preacher isn't God. Religion's first mistake. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Do, do you feel that people should, I guess in a sense, go to church but not feel like it's necessary to be at church and, and, and listening to what a pastor says? Wow. You go to church not for the sake of trying to keep the rules. You go to church not for the sake of trying to keep the rules. Wow. You go to church not for the sake of trying to keep the rules. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You go to church not for the sake of trying to keep the rules. So basically, going to church is not about obeying the most high in Kirk Franklin's eyes. Do you see that, ladies and gentlemen? Do you see how he just exposed that he works for Satan? He's basically promoting the will of the devil. Do as thou wilt. In other words, going to church is not about listening to the pastor so you can uh, correct your walk, live a holy life, set apart, you know. It's not about that. It's just so that you could go there to, to, to play and dance. Listen to what he said, man. This is sick. Relationship. Mm. I think the album title in itself and even how you talked about it on Instagram and just now even, I think it's, it's, it's so deep. It's a conversation that I think people need to have. Yeah. Um, like you talk about removing the mask. You were saying this on Instagram. Um, there's room for the cross that everyone, even me, religion is a prison. Yeah. Um, the preacher isn't God. Religion's first mistake. Yeah, so yeah. The preacher isn't God. It's religion's first mistake. The preacher isn't God. The preacher isn't God. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the men of the most high that are in this earth right now pushing this truth is a represent. They're the representatives of the most high. And if you don't feel that you are a representative of the most high, something is wrong with you as a, as a man. You understand? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes twelve thirteen, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Why, Ringo? For this is the whole duty of man. The whole duty of man is to keep the commandments. So why isn't Kirk Franklin teaching people to keep the commandments of the Most High? I tell you brothers to rep the Most High every time I go live. Whether I'm doing some video, reaction to a video, uh, some comedy skits entertaining you, whatever the case is, I always say keep the most high first. Follow the scriptures. I always put that, you know, because I want that to be in the corner of your mind as a reminder that, yeah, we live in this world. uh, We got to go to work. We got families, but we have to have that connection to the most high. It's very important. The whole duty of the matter is to keep the commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So let us hear the conclusion. So if you're watching this live stream, don't just watch 10 minutes and turn it off. You ain't going to get the full power of this dynamic teaching until you watch the whole stream. And this is why a lot of people are unable to comprehend things because they only listen to three minutes and then they leave. And then they judge me and say, I don't know what I'm talking about. They didn't even finish the, the video. You got to stay in the classroom long enough. A lot of people claim they went to college, they have these degrees, they're educated. But if you really are, then surely you would have been under a lecture. Those lectures can be pretty long. So you're basically saying you've never been under a three-hour, four-hour lecture. You know what I mean? Listening to one guy talk for hours. You know? Readers are leaders. People that listen and learn, those are the people that earn. You understand? Let's get back to the tapes. Yeah. Do you feel that people should, I guess in a sense, go to church but not feel like it's necessary to be at church? Go to church but not feel like it's necessary to be at church. Let's hear what the Christian, musician, preacher, 
Kirk Franklin has to say. And, and, and listening to what a pastor says? You go to church not for the sake of trying to keep the rules. Wow. You go to church not for the sake of trying to keep the rules. Wow. You go to church not for the sake of trying to keep the rules. Man. You go to the church to be able, like, it, it's basically going on a date versus having to go on a date. This is crazy. You you go out to eat with someone you love because you want to be there. Basically, instead of going to the same restaurant. Let's see what the scripture says, because, again, a lot of times, listen, people, if you notice throughout the stream, I post the scriptures. I don't sit around playing games. I don't sit around just talking, just talking. I got to bring these scriptures out. Second Timothy, chapter four, verse two to five, it says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves, heap to themselves, heap to themselves, teachers, 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 have an itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Kirk Franklin is not doing that. Kirk Franklin is not making full proof of his ministry. Kirk Franklin is not preaching the word. He's not instant in season or out of season. He's not reproving. He's not rebuking. He's not exhorting with long suffering and doctrine. He's not. He is the guy that the scriptures warned us about. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust. What does the word lust mean? Strong desire. So after their strong desire, shall they heap to themselves teachers. What kind of teachers? False teachers. You know, like Kirk Franklin, false musicians. You know, like Kirk Franklin, those kind of guys. Why? Because they have itching ears. And because of people like Kirk Franklin, the people primarily in the rainbow community, shall turn their ears from the truth and shall turn, it shall be turned to fables. And that's why the brother that is on the stage right there with, I mean, in the, uh, in the interview with Kirk, that's the reason why he's not going to end up making it to the kingdom because Kirk is not giving him the truth. It could be the same restaurant mm -hmm. and it could be for a date or for a business meeting. And if you're going for a business meeting, you're not going to have the same passion. You're not going to dress the same. You're not going to be as fresh. But if you're meeting for a date, you're going to go with a different passion and energy, right? Wow. So you go to church, but you don't go to church to try to keep the rules. Wow. You go to church because you're excited about the relationship. So you're not going to church to keep the commandments. You're going to church because, you know, you just want to have a good time. That's basically what he's saying here, fam. Listen, listen to what he says, man. Listen to this. Keep the rules. Mm -hmm. You go to church because you're excited about the relationship. So you're going to church because you're excited about the relationship, but you're not keeping the rules. That's basically what Kirk Franklin just said, y'all. He just said you're going to church not to keep the rules. You're just going there because you're excited about the relationship. Do you see why the majority of people that claim they Christians are not going to make it to the kingdom because they're not following what the Bible says. They're not. Again, Ecclesiastes says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. That's what the scripture says, fam. The scripture says the whole duty of man is to keep the commandments for those of you who can't see. You see that? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. The whole duty of man is to keep the commandments, to obey the most high. Ain't nothing else. That's what, a, what, that's what these pastors, teachers, and prophets are supposed to be pushing you to do. If they're not doing that, they're not sent by the most high, they're sent by the devil. Kirk Franklin was sent by the devil. Period. Let's go. But you don't go to church to try to... Keep the rules. Wow. You go to church because you're excited about the relationship. Wow. You don't go to church to try to keep the rules. Wow. You go to church because you're excited about the relationship. How could you be excited about the relationship when you're not keeping the rules? Imagine getting a nice, w w imagine getting a woman, brother, that you think is a nice sister and 
you wife her up, but she's not keeping the rules. Meaning she's not doing her part in the marriage. Are you going to be really excited about the relationship? Come on. You're not going to be excited about that relationship. Let's get back to the tapes. Okay. okay. And if you don't go to church, you don't feel condemned because you miss church. Wow. Notice how he said you don't feel condemned. Let's see what the Bible says. According to the book of John, chapter three, verse 18, it says, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing that? See, all of this stuff about being condemned, nobody could condemn you. You're condemned already, according to the Bible. The Bible made it very clear. He that believeth on him is not condemned. If I am in a church and I know I'm repping the most high, I know I'm living to the best of my ability. I don't care what the pastor says. I'm not going to feel condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. That's why they feel condemned. When a person of the alternative lifestyle come in church and the pastor begin to speak, speak about their sin and they feel like you're condemning me you're judging me you were condemned already you were condemned already because you don't believe in the only begotten name of the most high you don't believe that's why you feel condemnation you understand but if you knew the love of the most high it's all about correcting. That's why the scripture says, despise not the chastisement of the heavenly father. Because if you're one of his children, he's going to whip you back in the shape. It's just the way it works. But Kirk Franklin is trying to pacify the people. Let's go. Try to keep the rules. Mm -hmm. You go to church because you're excited about the relationship. Okay. Okay. And if you don't go to church, you don't feel condemned because you miss church. Yeah. You know, you know, it, it. And for the record, you don't have to technically go to a church building to seek God. I said you technically don't have to go to a church building to feel like you're going to church. You understand? My thing is, if you're going to attend a church, they should be preaching the truth. They should be preaching the gospel. They should be a holy church. And there really aren't any in America except one that I know of, and that's the Honorable Pastor Dowell's Church, Straightway Ministry. That's the only one that I know of. Now, if any of the brothers in the truth know of another uh, congregation of, of believers, and you know of that, and they're 100% on point, I'm talking about men that are keeping the commandments, I'm talking about men that are all about the Bible and the people know that they are the biblical Israelites. Because if you're at a church, listen to me, people, if you're at a church and they're not teaching you that you're the biblical Israelites, the chosen people of the most high, you need to leave as soon as possible. You need to leave as soon as possible. If any pastor is teaching you that Jesus is a white man with blue eyes and blonde hair, you need to leave that church. You understand? Gino Jennings is a false prophet. You understand? So don't even put his name there. Gino Jennings is a false prophet. He has already done been proven. Uh, Pastor Dow done a great job of acknowledging that and posting all the videos. And it's to the point now where it's like, if you still following him, if he, if he don't repent, then something ain't right. Gino Jennings is a false teacher, fam. He have been caught teaching lies, teaching misinformation, and not bringing out the truth from the Bible. And just because he's one of a very few men that have been going hard in the paint, just because he have a great reader, just because uh, his church have been very thorough on preaching holiness, does not mean that he's 100% because he's been caught He's been caught teaching lies and have not repented when he was called out. So as of now, he is a false teacher.
period. I'm going to do a video about him pretty soon. I'm very busy. You know what I'm saying? Pastor Dow already done cooked him already. But I'm going to definitely do my, my part in the uh, cookout pretty soon. But I just had to put that out there because I knew somebody was going to bring that name up. I knew somebody was going to bring that name up. But sorry, try again. You know what I mean? That man is totally anti-truth. And I've seen it and I heard it with my own eyes. And when I heard it, I was like, wow. They totally ignored the Bible. So as, as of today, as of, well, not even as of today, I already done know that once I saw the video. Because I thought that Geno Jennings was true. There's a lot of things that he preached that is true. Don't get me wrong. He do teach a lot of things that is true. But when you're teaching lies and false doctrine, you got to call it out. If I'm teaching lies and somebody call me out and they're able to prove it by the scriptures that I'm leading the people the wrong way, I got to repent. There's no other way. I got to look at myself and repent. I cannot think like, oh, I can't be corrected. No, if I'm teaching lies and false doctrine, somebody got to make that very clear or else I'm going to continue to do it. And he was proven to be a false teacher and he didn't repent. Instead, he's being arrogant. And that's a problem. Let's get back to the tapes. It, it, it's basically that you don't carry the weight of I got to do right. Okay. That I will never be right enough. Wow. So Kirk Franklin is basically saying that uh, the weight of trying to be right and live right is a burden that people are facing when they come to the church and Kirk Franklin is trying to erase that. He's trying to erase that. He want to make people feel comfortable in their sins. Listen again. Because you're excited about the relationship. Okay, okay. And if you don't go to church, you don't feel condemned because you mischurched. Yeah. You know, you know, it, 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 it's basically that you don't carry the weight of I got to do right. Okay. That I will never be right enough. But my Savior was right enough for me fall in love with him and I'm good. And I'm going to go back to the beginning because I was telling you off camera that I grew up in the 90s and the 80s, 90s, but I can remember when you first came on the scene. When I was 12. When you were 12. Yeah. <laughs> you, were, you were sort of too taboo back then for like some of the older saints in my church. And, and Notice the brother said that Kirk was too taboo for the saints that was at his church. So it's very evident based on the receipts that the guy that clearly show all the signs of living the alternative life has a church that he is attending, but that church is not open in the Bible to teach him what thus saith the most high. Now, if you don't think that's a problem, something's wrong. You, he don't know something, something's wrong. Like, are you kidding me? Why pastors are not teaching these people the truth. If they want to leave your church because they are offended, let them leave. But your job as a pastor is to teach the truth, raw and uncut. No sugarcoat. You know, there's no way you can openly live this lifestyle around me. And I talked about this in other videos because I remember there was one person that asked about, well, Ringo, what if you had a son and your son is gay? Um, how do you feel about that? I said, well, if I have a son and he's gay, he's still my son. At the same time, I'm not going to be in support of what he do in terms of his lifestyle. And he can't come around me dressed up like a woman. He can't come around me acting like a woman. He can't come around me being girly. He can't come around me doing none of that. He's going to have to put some bass in his voice when he come around me. He cannot invite no friends over. He cannot have some boyfriend at the house. He can't do none of those things. You know what I mean? I'll be supportive if he want to do music, if he want to do something creative. I'll be there to support him financially or whatever the case is, provide wisdom. But when it comes to his lifestyle, I'm not going to be there for none of that stuff. And none of that stuff can be done under my roof. Do you understand? None of that, none of that could be done under my roof, which means if you want to be a practitioner of that lifestyle, you're going to have to leave this house because I don't want to bring the curses of the most high upon the family by you being on the boat. We trying to live for God. Do you understand? Like you have to understand how this works. You, if you have children that are living the alternative life, I'm not saying that you be evil towards your children. What I'm saying is you have to follow the word of the most high. So whatever the word of the most high say goes, you can't be in support of that. You know, you can still love your child 
and give them the truth and teach them to repent. That's all you can do. But they're on their own after that. You know, if they come around, they call you. Hey, dad, um, I really need help. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm short on food, whatever the case is. I don't have a problem helping. You know what I mean? Because if I'm your father, I'm going to always be there for you in terms of the basic necessities of life. You know, in terms of what a father's supposed to do. You know, but when it comes to your lifestyle, I'm never supporting that. Because I know the outcome and I know where you're going to go. And I don't want to be a part of that judgment. Because I'm concerned not only for your soul, but now if I'm embracing what you do, I'm bringing a curse upon me and all my other children. When you understand the scriptures, when you, under scripture, when you understand the scriptures and you know the severity of the problem, it's not a game, fam. It's very, very serious. But uh, let's get back to the tapes. Um, a lot of the black community, I think, didn't know how to digest Kirk Franklin. He was dancing. He was wearing jeans. Um, what was it like back then getting that kind of, I guess, backlash or... or Notice how he have images that are Photoshopped. That don't even look like Kirk Franklin right there. <laughs> Do you see how the image is Photoshopped, guys? That don't even look like Kirk Franklin right there. Imagine a man using Photoshop to enhance his photos to make him look a certain way. Do you see what he's doing? That's not Kirk Franklin right there. Let's take a screenshot of that. All right, let me take a screenshot of this real quick because I want you to see this for yourself, All right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that into the video. And again, ladies and gentlemen, this is gonna be a lengthy show. So uh, be patient. It's gonna be a lengthy show because I have a lot of work that I gotta cover here. A lot of work has to be covered because when you're bringing out this truth, Critique. it's serious. Uh, you know, I don't really, really try to pay attention to what it was. Now notice this. Notice the picture and notice Kirk Franklin. Notice the picture and notice Kirk Franklin. That's not him. <laughs> Somebody else. But this is how these guys do. They do what women do. That's effeminate for a man to be used in Photoshop on his, on his pictures. Just be yourself, fam. Like, seriously, as a man, you trying to enhance your looks? That don't even make sense. You're not supposed to be doing that. You're supposed to be rugged. You're supposed to just be who you are. I mean, some of it was painful. Some of it was kind of confusing because I was just being authentically me, you know. But, but at the same time, I know I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. And I'm cool with that. Um, I mean... I mean, I'm cool with the fact of knowing that everybody won't get what they need in their faith from me, and that's fine, you know, because there's so many people to pull from, from the narrative of God from, and, and I'm just part of the family, and I hope I play a role in somebody's life. Wow. I saw you a couple years ago in an interview, and you weighed in on a hot topic, which is, you know, the LGBT community being embraced by the black church. The LGBTQ community being embraced by the black church. Did y'all just hear that? Did y'all just hear that? Wow. Now remember, Kirk Franklin had on that same shirt when he was on The Breakfast Club, which means he's on a mission. He's on tour, jumping from platform to platform to promote his music. While singing to the Rainbow community, because remember, they're the ones that are supporting him. That Those are his main supporters. They're the ones that's funding these albums. So when he pushed these mu this music out, it's for them to buy. He don't care about you. See, here's the thing, fam. If you're a person who live and pra a practitioner of the alternative lifestyle, right? Kirk Franklin don't love you. Kirk Franklin is using you. He don't love you because as a Christian, as one who claim he followed the Bible, he know that you have things that you do in practice. And he know what the Bible say about it, but he's refusing to tell you because he want you to feel comfortable in doing what you do in secret while making you believe that you're still going to make it to heaven. This is what Kirk want you to believe. But he know you're not going to go there. But if he could get your money, that's what he's mainly concerned with. But see, here on Ringo TV Reactions, we tell you the truth raw and uncut. You're not going to make it to the kingdom of the most high while living in your sin. It's not going to happen. 
Those of you who just rep the most high, just your regular sins that you struggle with, you know you're not right. Anytime you bend towards a sin as a believer, you know you got to repent. You know this ain't right. And you know if your day and hour was today and, and you, ain't, you ain't got yourself right, you know you're going to have to answer for these things. There got to come a time when we have to say, look, enough is enough. It's time to repent. Turn off the, the P-O-R-N. Stop beating the drum. And I'm talking to you brothers. Stop beating the drum. You sisters, you need to put down the rose toys. Right? Guys, stop, stop going out there sleeping around with another man's wife. Right? Ladies, stop being in them streets, 3 0 4 it up, you know, with the sneaky links. Like, come on now. Come on. Stop credit card scamming. Stop robbing and stealing. Stop playing this game, fam. Because when it's all said and done, your soul's going to be required for you. Let's get back to the tapes. And I thought it was progressive. And now it's like gay culture is, is, is front and center with shows like Empire, you know, one of the biggest shows on TV. I think it's a discussion that everybody's trying to figure out how to have in church. How do we move forward with, you know, um, gays and lesbians being embraced in the black church? Wow. Well, this is what I would say, first of all, is I would say that I want to apologize wow. for all of the uh, hurtful and painful things that have been said about uh, people in the church that have been talented and gifted and been musical. Uh, Notice more apologies. Do you see what Kirk Franklin is doing? Notice how he's looking down and he got his hand on his mouth. He don't really mean what he say, but he's doing that because he want the gay community to be happy with the fact that he's apologizing to them. Why are you apologizing to the gay community for when you know what the Bible says? Like, what does apologizing to them mean? What does that does? What that does for Kirk Franklin? It fills his pockets with money. That's what it does, fam. Listen. That we've used that we've embarrassed them and made sermons at them, you know, and Steve and all this other horrible crap that we've done and we have not. So let me get this straight. Kirk just said it's a horrible thing for a pastor to do a sermon about issues regarding homosexuality. So he's basically saying that God is horrible. He's basically saying that the Bible is a horrible book for what it says about the lifestyle. Do you see how Kirk Franklin is anti-God? Do you see how he's anti-truth? Do you see how he's rebellious and how he's in full support of homosexuality? This is what he always been. I've been exposing Kirk Franklin years ago. This ain't new. This ain't my first video about Kirk Franklin. I've been exposing him from two, in 2006, 2008. I've been exposing this guy multiple times. He always been a fraud. I would think that in today's day, people would still know that. But unfortunately, most people don't. They love him. Um, we, we have not treated them like people. Wow. wow. He said we have not treated them like people. First of all. This is not about treating someone like people. This is about people needing to repent. You understand? Nobody is out here mistreating a person who's a homosexual. I treat everybody with respect. Doesn't matter who you are. I worked when I was on the nine to five. I worked around gay people. I treated them with the utmost respect. You understand? The utmost respect. I treated them like, like any other coworker because we're at work, we're doing business. So I'm not here to judge your sexuality. That's not how we roll. You understand? I worked with men that were homosexuals on the job and I had to work with them. And I didn't look at them and say, hey, supervisor, I don't want to be around that person because they're gay. No, we worked with them. We joked. We cracked jokes. We used to crack gay jokes in front of gay people and they would be laughing with us because we're, we're just having fun, talking, doing whatever. We're on the job. I worked around women that are lesbians. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I'm not in support. And I told these people, I remember one time there was an issue at the job place where you had, they had a guy that's living the alternative lifestyle. And like I said, the brother's cool, cool dude. But at the same time, I had an issue with him being in the locker room and I'm trying to change. So I would go change 
in the shower area because I ain't want to be changing in front of a dude that like men. Why am I changing in front of him for? You know? And I remember I had to let him know that I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm just telling you straight. Like, you're into dudes, bro. So I'm not going to be here changing in front of you, giving you some sort of show. You get what I mean? And I had to make these things clear. And I had to let supervision know and everybody know because they, we used to have these meetings every time. And I used to be telling the supervisor, listen, man, it's like these people got all these rights. It's, what about us? We don't got a say in this too? You know? So it's not about anybody attacking anybody. It's not about anybody putting anybody down. It's not about none of that stuff. It's about what does thus saith the Lord, thus saith the Most High. What does the Bible say? You understand? Kirk Franklin is not giving you what the Bible say. He's watering everything down. No, human beings. He want, he's making it seem like, like people that are in the church are not treating homosexuals like human beings. That's what he's basically implying. Now, let's define what does it mean to, to treat a person who's a homosexual like they're not human beings. You know what the interpretation is? Accepting their lifestyle. Not accepting their lifestyle is interpreted as not treating them like human beings. Come on, y'all. Come on. I'm bringing it out, man. In the church, Kirk Franklin is making it seem like believers in Christ are not treating homosexuals like humans. And the interpretation is if you're not supportive of what they do, if you're not embracing what they practice, then that means you're looking down on them and you don't love them. That's what Kirk is saying. And that's wrong, because according to the Bible, the Bible says that people who do these things are worthy of death. So is God putting them down in the Bible? Is God attacking? Come on. Kirk Franklin, you are a false prophet, a false teacher. You don't even post to even carry any sort of Bible. You just need to go home and stay by yourself. Might as well you just go start on OnlyFans and put your music over there. You'll get a lot of support. Because as of now, if people don't know you're false, then they're just foolish at this point. Human beings. And we're talking about human beings. You know, people, men and women that God has created as people. Now. Whoa. He said that God created. Now, God did not create homosexuality. I said, God did not create homosexuality. It's a choice. God did not create that. God created male and female. That's what God created, y'all. We have to call it out for what it is, man, because these, these false prophets, man, these false prophets, these false pastors, they lie so much, man, misleading people. Let's go. If you if you ask me, what does the Bible say? Because Kirk is not the author of the Bible. Wow. I'm one that has to just submit and trust God's love letters. Because I call the Bible God's love letters. Notice he called the Bible's God's love letter. Okay, a love letter in the Bible says that a man is not supposed to lie with a man. That's in the Bible. That's a love letter too. What about that, Kirk? The Bible says that they changed the natural use and and it was pretty much men with men doing those things which are unseemly. The Bible says that. Was that a love letter too? See, Kirk is not giving you what the Bible says. He's pacifying the people because he want people to like him. I don't care if you like me or not. It doesn't matter because in the end, I'm going to have to answer to the most high. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, when you die and you go on, you are going to have to answer to God. And that's not going to be a pleasant thing if you know you lived a wicked life. Is that, uh, does the Bible refer to whether it's heterosexual sins, homosexual sins, adultery, sins, or uh, fornicating sins? Notice how he's trying to mix other sins into one pot. He's trying to make it seem like all sins are the same. That's what he's doing. For marriage and all that. That's what the Bible talks about. And you know what else the Bible talks about along with that? It talks about grace. It talks about love. It Notice grace and love. I told you already. Shall we continue in, in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. 
Kirk Franklin is supposed to be telling people that are in the church that are practice practitioners of homosexuality. Shall you continue in your sin that grace may abound? God forbid. But he's not doing that because if he do that, he'll lose members. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, if Kirk Franklin actually got out there and started to teach and preach the truth, he would lose all his support. He would lose all his support. You know how many times I lose subscribers when I teach truth like this? People just be like, well, I'm unsubscribing. You know why they unsubscribing? Because they're living that lifestyle. And they don't like the fact that I'm talking about it. So they feel like, well, I thought you were cool, Ringo. Oh, you thought I was cool? Oh, until I started talking about your sin. Oh, I get it. That's how most people are. Kirk refused to talk about it because he don't want to lose any money. Because the, the church is predominantly filled with people that practice that lifestyle. These are facts, man. You go into any of these Christian churches, just look at the people, look at the choir, look at the musicians. It's all over the pulpit. It's everywhere. But yet they're telling you you're going to heaven. Okay. It's about mercy because we are all in need of that. Let's break down and the so, scriptures. Yes, the Bible talks about... Let's break down these scriptures. I'm going to let them talk and then we're going to rewind that back. What it says about all of mankind because he loves all of mankind and 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 he does articulate that and i may not always always do the best of trying to articulate that or, or trying to understand that but i know that i have to be committed to walking in the spirit of love notice he believes he have to walk into the spirit of love let's see what the scripture says let's break this thing down from the book of romans and so yes the bible talks about what let me tell you what the bible talks about because kirk franklin is not never going to open the bible for you in the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 18 to 32. Now, notice, ladies and gentlemen, since I started this live stream, I've been posting nothing but scriptures over and over. The Bible says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. Now, notice what it says. The wrath, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That's Kirk Franklin. Because that which may be known of God, that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God have showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. See, people that live the alternative lifestyle are without excuse. They don't have no excuse when they stand before God. Kirk Franklin have no excuse when he stand before God. The scriptures goes on and it says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. And there foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God in, and into an image made like to corruptible men and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them un up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which goes, which is against nature. Notice what the Bible says. It says, for, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So there is no such thing as somebody being born gay. That's against nature. Nature. That's crazy, right? And notice something, Pam. Notice something. You got somebody in the chat. Somebody in the chat is literally asking, what Bible verse is this? 
Could you believe that? Somebody is literally asking, what Bible verse is this? After I just said what Bible verses I'm reading. Do you see how nobody's paying attention in class, y'all? Do you see what I got to deal with? Sad. This just shows you that people don't read. That right there just shows you people don't read. By the pure fact that I'm reading this and they got to ask, what Bible verse is this? Prove they don't read the Bible. They don't read nothing. They don't read anything. You know why? Because they passed it, don't teach them nothing. But if, if I read it, I'm a bad guy for reading the truth. I'm showing you what the Bible says. But they don't want to believe that. They don't want to believe what the Bible says, y'all. Check it out. You see what it says right there? Romans, for the people that are slow that are in the class. You see that? This is sad that I got to keep going through this mess. You don't see what it says right there? Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 32. King James Bible. You know, the King James Bible. But you don't know that. Absolutely amazing, people. Absolutely amazing. Now, let's continue back where we left off. It says, wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So there is no such thing as somebody being born gay. There is no such thing as a child deciding they want to be a female now. You know, a boy want to be a girl. No, mm -mm, that's not that's not biblical. The scripture says that the women changed the natural use, which means they made a conscious decision. Just like with D. Wade, with his son, how they turned him into a girl now. That was a conscious decision for them to change. They made that choice. He wasn't born that way. Because the scripture says that the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. So if something is against nature, it's not natural. Period. You understand? It goes on and it says, and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use. Now, notice what the scripture says. Notice what Kirk Franklin don't bring out. And again, we got 979 people in the building. If you are in this building and you have love for the truth, click the like button. <laughs> click the like button. Because this is the reason why people are going to hell. It's because the truth is not being supported. It's just that simple. We push this truth, people ain't sharing the videos. They keep calling me all sorts of names rather than them obeying God and repenting. The Bible says, and this is what your pastor don't teach you. The Bible says, and likewise, also the men leaving. Notice what it says. The men leaving the natural use of the woman. Now, my goodness, how could you as a brother leave the natural use of a woman? A fine sister. Are you out of your mind? You got to be. But the Bible says, likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat, which mean interpretation, D-I-C-K, meat. See, the scripture says meat. It really meant D-I-C-K. In case you didn't know that, that's what they meant to put there. Because the guys receive that in themselves. It says, receiving in themselves that recompense of their era, which was D-I-C-K. Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Because again, your pastor is not going to read these scriptures like this. They're not going to break it down. 
You know? And I remember, fam, on the 9 to 5, they had this brother, right? They had this brother. He was, um, he came into the workplace as if though he's gay, right? And I can recall he would bring back stories of him hanging out with women. And you know what this brother was doing? He wasn't, he wasn't gay. He was bisexual, which means he, he liked men and women. But this is what he was doing. Because he was gay, right, the women at the job would invite him over their house. They would be naked. They would go in the shower, and they would come out of the shower with their towel, with their breasts out, and they would think nothing while he's sitting on the chair because they figure, oh, he's gay. But the whole time, the brother also liked women. He liked men and he liked women. Now, the reason why we know this is because, again, if you're in a job at the cafeteria, people talk. And he would tell us these stories. He's like, yeah, I used to get there and, you know what I'm saying? I used to try to make them think that I wasn't really into women. They didn't know that. They thought I was full-bledged gay. But they were attracted. And it was one particular day, uh, the sister came out and she was naked. And she was, like, telling him, you know, to take some photos for some... She was supposed to be a photographer, whatever the case is. And she, she realized that he was giving off signs of being attracted. Women could pick up on that. And once she did that and she felt that he was attracted to her, stimulated somehow, she got real upset, got a towel, wrapped it around. And I think it was a situation where he got aroused while taking photos of her. And she called him out on that and was like, if you're gay, why are you getting excited by looking at me? And he got caught. And he said from that day, it's like he couldn't even be around the women at the workplace. The, the, the message spread around that he's not just gay, he's bisexual. And it was a mess because the, all the women thought that this guy was 100% gay, only like men, had no attraction towards women. And he was in the female locker room. He was allowed to go in the female bathroom. Literally. Because they had something in the workplace that at that time that if you're a guy and you feel like you're a woman, you could go into a woman's bathroom. I don't know if they still do that, the nine to fives now, but hey, that's what they were doing back then. So now the scriptures go on and it says, and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Do you see this, ladies and gentlemen? To all the students in the class, pay attention. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. See, when you're a person who hates the truth, you hate the preachers, you hate the teachers, you hate the prophets of God, and you don't like to retain God in your knowledge, God is going to give you over to a reprobate mind. Do you understand? You understand? This is just real talk. Shout out to Jackson for the five hour super chat. Um, so he gives you over to a reprobate mind. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, Wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without natural, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, 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 who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things kirk franklin they which commit such things are worthy of grace no it didn't say grace are worthy of death
Are you seeing what the Bible says? Are you seeing what the Bible says? But Kirk Franklin is not telling the people that. Are worthy of death. But now check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out. Are you ready for this? Put a one if you're ready for this. Put a one. Put a one in the chat if you are ready for this. The Bible says, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Oh, man, oh, man. Listen to me very carefully. This is very serious about what I got to say. A lot of men that might be in the chat are gay. A lot of you guys that are in the clouds are gay. A lot of you ladies are gay. And I'm going to prove it to you. The other day I did a video and the video was about poly relationships being of the devil, not polygyny, poly, because poly relationships consist of one man, multiple women, but the women are lesbians. If you read the comments under that video, a lot of guys were saying the following, that they have pleasure and they get turned on, turned on from seeing two women kiss or see two women getting it in. That they get a lot of pleasure seeing that stuff. When you're a man and you have pleasure seeing two women have any sort of sexual contact, you not only support homosexuality, you're embracing it, you have pleasure from it, and that means that you are gay too. Because the Bible says in verse 32, knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. So based on the Bible, they that practice these things, whether they're male or female, the Bible says they're worthy of death. Not only do the same, but those that have pleasure in them that do them. So if you're a person who claim you're a straight heterosexual man, but you love having threesomes with two or more women and the women are intimate with one another too, then you are also worthy of death because you're embracing it. So let me get this straight, brothers. You don't have a problem having sexual relations with two women that are lesbians you, you, you feel that's perfectly okay. But if you find out that uh, Michael Jordan and uh, Shaquille O'Neal had a gay relationship, you'll condemn them and say, that's, that's sad, man. That's nasty. That's disgusting. You can't have it both ways. You cannot condemn two men for being in a relationship when you yourself have two women that are lesbians and you're in a relationship with them. You hypocrite. So ladies, to the ladies, if you're around a guy that have no problem with two women being intimate with one another and he embraced that, that guy is gay. He's in the closet. I'm calling it out. He's on the DL. There's things that he do that you just don't know. He could be getting it in with men on the low key. He might be watching uh, gay P-O-R-N on the low key. He might be watching videos with she males on the low key. You never know what that brother is doing. Why? If he's into two women getting it on, what else is he into? What other fantasies he's into? Whatever secret things he loves watching? Think about it. So if you're a guy and you're into having threesomes, foursomes, you're gay. If you're a brother 
and you're in a threesome where you and a brother are banging out a woman at the same time, you're gay. You know why? You're naked in front of another man. You're watching his tool. You're looking at him. And y'all taking turns with the same woman. Bro, you are completely disgusting. You're not masculine at all. And see, ladies, these be the type of guys that you run into. You run into these type of disgusting guys and then you're wondering why you got these diseases. You're wondering why you're getting these STDs because you got men that are in threesomes with other men and a woman and they all sharing bodily fluids and then they bringing that mess back to you. Only on Ringo TV reactions, you're going to get this raw fire. Only on Ringo TV reactions. So if you're a guy and you take pleasure in people that practice homosexuality, the Bible says you're going to be worthy of the same judgment. Learn how to read, ladies and gentlemen. It says, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things. Listen, people. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them so if I'm a man of the most high and I have pleasure seeing two women tonguing each other down the bible says that I will be worthy of death too because of my own lust, which mean I'm also a practicing, a practitioner of homosexuality. Do you see that, ladies and gentlemen? You better wake up and smell this coffee. This is serious business, y'all. Let's get back to the tapes. Let's find out what else we got to learn. And that always always do the best of trying to articulate that or, or trying to understand that. But I know that I have to be committed to walking in the spirit of love mm. and humility. Notice he said he have to be committed to walking in the spirit of love and humility. The Bible says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. The Bible says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Kirk Franklin is not doing that. And never as an authority. And the Bible is not a book. Notice he says never as an authority, which means to... Make people feel like you're judging them and correcting them. Kirk Franklin don't believe in correcting people, rebuking people, nothing. He's a false prophet. That's an attack on gay people. Wow. It's not a, a, a book written. He said the Bible is not a book for attacking gay people. He, that's what he said. But what did the book of Romans says? It says that they who do such things are worthy of death. There's judgment in the Bible against people that do these things. There's judgments for all sins in the Bible. But Kirk Franklin is basically making, making you believe that there's nothing wrong with you. And this is why I'm saying if you're a person that practices that lifestyle and you're in the church and you really do want to be saved, right? Kirk Franklin is the wrong person to be listening to. You should be listening to my videos, right? Because if you're really trying to get close to the most high and you really want to repent, right, then you got to listen to the hard, stone-cold truth. That's the only way. We live in a world that embraces homosexuality as if though it's a style of clothing that you got to wear. You know, it seems like if you're an artist and you come out and you're gay or you have some flamboyant way about yourself, you gain more success. Everybody want to work with you, you know? This is why in every motion picture and movie, they try to put black men in dresses, because they want to feminize them. They want to turn them into a woman, emasculate them. You know what I mean? This is what they do in Hollywood. Let's go. Always do the best of trying to articulate that or, or trying to understand that. But I know that I have to be committed to walking in the spirit of love mm. and humility. Love and humility. Wow. Shout out to Intelligent Savage 629 for the $10 uh, support. Sp appreciate you for sponsoring the show. Shout out to Trendin' with Sharice for the $10 super chat. It says, nobody is teaching. Nobody is teaching us like Ringo TV, 100%. The undisputed truth, much respect. 
appreciate the support sponsoring the shows. And shout out to V Dub Man, you know what I'm saying? Moderator in the building. Let me see. I didn't even see who else is in the building. Is V Dub Man the only one here? Let me see. Okay, all right. So shout out to brother V Dub Man in the building. All right, all right. Let's get back to this case. Let's go. And never is an authority. And the Bible is not a book that's an attack on gay people. It's not a The Bible is a book that attacks sin. What is he talking about? The word attack is a strong word. The most high want us to repent. These pastors and preachers and musicians are not teaching the people anything. Oh, a book written to attack gay people. Wow. It's not what the Bible means. I, I, I agree with you. Wow. The brother that lives the alternative lifestyle said it feels that way. Kirk Franklin says, I agree with you. Why? Because Kirk Franklin loved the practice of homosexuality. In the book of Luke, chapter, chapter 9, verse 62, it says, But Jesus told him, Anyone who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Wow. See, Kirk Franklin put his hand to the plow, but he's looking back. He's not fit for the kingdom of God. He's not. Look at his face. You see anger. Because Kirk Franklin himself is in the closet. He just can't come out. The so-called woman or whatever wife he got or whatever the case is, I don't even know if he's still with that same woman, that's called a beard. Kirk Franklin is living in the alternative lifestyle. There's no way around that. You know what I mean? Anybody that don't know that by now is just something wrong with you. And that's horrible. Wow, he said it's horrible. So teaching the truth is horrible. So how do you teach the truth, Kirk? How do you tell people about their sin to repent? It is horrible that we have made it where the Bible is a homophobic manual. Wow. So the Bible is a homophobic manual. So me telling people what the Bible says so that we can obey God and make it to the kingdom is now a homophobic manual. This is coming from a Christian that claimed he serves Jesus. That's not what the Bible is. I mean, you want to. Let's see what the scripture says here. I don't know if I missed one. Let me see. Did I miss one of the scriptures? Hold on a second. Okay. I got that one. All right. Let me just play it from here. Bible is a homophobic manual. That's not what the Bible is. Wow. I mean, you want to talk about. Th OK, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17 says there shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. The Bible. Notice that this is right from the Bible, the same Bible that you get in a courtroom when you're going up on the stand and they say, put your hand on the Bible. Do you swear to tell the truth and, and, and the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. And we lie on the Bible by saying we're going to tell the truth, even though we're going to lie. In that same Bible, it says it right there. Why Kirk Franklin is not opening the Bible to show people what the truth is. Because he's not with the most high. Things that, 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 that God gets at pride. And, and and notice how he's trying to say, in other words, God is not focusing on homosexuality. He's focusing on your pride. He's focusing on this. He's focusing on that. The topic is homosexuality. He's dancing around the issue. We know that there's other sins. He's trying to include homosexuality as if though that's not anything big. It's just it's like any other sin. No, it's not. Homosexuality is listed as an abomination. That's very, very serious. That's no different than blaspheming the, the spirit of the most high. Jealousy and, and, and envy and haughtiness and arrogance. I mean, we, we could talk about all of that all day. But what we also see. Is Let me put that on the record. Watchman says it's called deflecting by using semantics. God sent in his son to save us all because we were all, right? We were all straight, gay, whatever. We were all lost. Do you see how he's trying to say that we were all gay, straight, this and that? Being straight is not a sin. I don't even know why he put that in there. And in need of a savior. And there's room at the cross for all of us. Two, 22, 22, give me my two years. Give me my two, give me my two years. Well, even though you began when you were 12, <laughs> what do you ultimately want your legacy to be? Oh man, he was madly in love with Jesus. Wow. That man, that was Jesus' dude. He was. Um, he was God's billboard. 
that he lived to make God famous and not himself. All right. Wow. It's deep. Okay, so folks, I want you to go out and get this album. I heard it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Do you really like it? No, I really like it. And I think it's... it's, it's what does it feel like? Better than Hello Fear. You know, it, it feels different for you. You know, it doesn't feel as... As, 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 as rich with like a choir, you know, mm. it's, 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 it's notice all of this promotion about an album, nothing about getting anybody saved, nobody's learning nothing. The brother that's sitting next to him, clearly in the lifestyle, Kirk didn't give him no gospel. Is he gonna make it to the kingdom? Kirk don't care about these people, man. He don't. more like we're getting you. Wow. And, and normally I feel like we get a lot of mm -hmm. the family mm -hmm. or, the, or mm -hmm. the ensemble of folks you have with you. Or whoever it is, that album. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, to me, is some of the first time that I'm really getting to experience you and, wow. and your sound. And I think it's reflecting. That's very it's kind of you. That's yeah. big. That's big coming yeah. from you. And I respect hey. your perspective because you hey. are a true journalist. <laughs> it was great from Ohio. From Ohio. Well, having you. And when can folks get this album? When can the folks get the album? Uh, Friday the 13th. <laughs> a gospel album Friday the 13th a gospel album on Friday the 13th come on y'all it's crazy right wow somebody said uh, live in color <laughs> that's crazy we were talking about same sex uh, marriage uh, uh oh, here we go. More, more issues, fam. Like I said, I'm breaking down all of these videos because I'm showing you what exactly is going on in the mind of Kirk Franklin, because he's pretty much out there pushing all of these ideologies to get away from the truth, to be more accepting of the alternative lifestyle rather than preaching against what it does and give you a healthy understanding of what it means to serve the most high in spirit and in truth. Um, it's been a big issue in our country. Yeah. Um, yeah. was a, 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 a staple in the conversation in the presidential election. Uh, we've had a few artists, um, a few athletes have recently came out, Jason Collins. Yes. And um, a lot of people uh, in the church are in conflict with this. Yeah, like Kirk Franklin. He's in conflict with this because he's not trying to give you the truth. How do you feel about same-sex marriage? Uh-oh. Well. Hear him start dancing. First of all, how I feel about any topic, I think it's going to be really minute. I think that's been the big problem is, is, is that I think that as Christians, as the church, we've come across like the, we've come across like the police. Yeah. Wow. You know, you know what comes across like you know where, where where the spirit of it it feels like the world police mm -hmm. so you know whatever my lens is it's always going to be trying my best to see something through what i believe is going to be god's word and not god's word and 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 and, and in essence of dogma mm -hmm. or in the essence of religion or to be right and to make other people wrong do you see how this guy is dancing around the questions? Do you see how he's not even answering the question? This guy is a false prophet, y'all. I first would, you know, probably would always want to say, man, that I'm very sorry for all of the ugly things and all the painful things that he's apologizing again, y'all. That's three times we've seen him apologizing to the gay community, fam. I believe even heard from church people, mm -hmm. you know, wow. you know, um, you know, because, because things can come from a very homophobic lens and mm -hmm. sometimes it feels very homophobic when people try to make their 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 stance and their beliefs and you know I, wow. I mean that's been some very painful ugly things that have been been said throughout the do you see how he's defending sin do you see how he's not with the most high do you see how he's keep apologizing he want the gay community to accept and embrace him so that he can make money if you're a person from the gay community and you support kirk franklin you need to stop because he don't he don't really love you. He don't. He's pacifying you to make you feel comfortable. I'm giving you the truth that he should be giving you. But you're not supporting what I do. You should be supporting me because I'm actually giving you the truth that's going to save your soul in the long run. That that have not always been in the essence of a heart for Christ. Yeah. And so how I would always sum it up whether whether you're talking about any issue that that people want to know what does God's word say about it. This is the one that I always want to stand on. And he still ain't telling you what God's word says. The book of Romans, it says, but there is none righteous. Now he just said, 
there is none righteous. Kirk Franklin just said that there is none righteous. Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin just said that there is none righteous. This is what he said. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we go further, do you believe that's true or false? Do you believe that's true or false, that there's none righteous? You believe that? Is that true or false? Let's see what the chat says. You got a lot of people thinking. They just thinking hard. They don't want to be put on the spot. You got two brave souls. Three brave people. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay. The majority says false. Okay. All right. We got. All right. So far, everybody seems to be in, in agreement. False. All right. Let's see what he got to say. Because he just said. There is none righteous. Let me rewind that back. Let's have him play it again. Now watch what happens. This is how you know when a person's a false prophet. Always sum it up whether, whether you're talking about any issue that that people want to know what does God's word say about it. This is the one that I always want to stand on in the book of Romans. It says, but there is none righteous, not one. So there's not one on the planet that is perfect. Now, he just said there's none righteous. No one on earth is perfect. In the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 9, it says, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. In the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, there was a man in the land of Oz who name, whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, it says, And when Abram was 99 years, 99 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Second Kings chapter 20 verse 3 says, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore before God's eyes and then the next verse says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God that's me that's you that's anybody walking wow. on this planet mm -hmm. that God sees us all as broken people that need his love and his grace now notice what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 48 it says be ye therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect Philippians chapter 3 verse 15 says, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in any thing ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So the Bible never said nobody's perfect. That's a Christian religious phrase. The Bible says in Matthew, Be ye therefore perfect. And I believe that's the Messiah telling you that. Be ye therefore perfect. The Messiah is telling you to be perfect. The Messiah. Kirk Franklin, do not serve the Lord. The Messiah said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So how he going to tell you that nobody's perfect when the Messiah said you could be perfect? In order to be perfect, you got to be in his will. You got to be keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments. You got to be living a set-apart life. You got to be living a holy life. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us could serve God. All of us could have perfect days. Do you know you can go a whole month without sinning? Do you know you can go a whole year without sinning? Do you know you can go 10 years without sinning? Do you know you choose to sin? 
Do you know there's no such thing as I just can't stop sinning? You could stop today. The problem is you're not making the choice. And what's happening, ladies and gentlemen, with a lot of us, we fall in what is known as lasciviousness. Lasciviousness means you have no restraints. It means you told yourself, I'm going to stop sinning. I'm going to stop masturbating. I'm going to stop watching P-O-R-N. I'm going to stop using the rose toy. I'm going to stop robbing and stealing. I'm going to stop hitting the streets. I'm going to stop committing adultery. But you find yourself doing it because you put yourself in circumstances which causes you to bend to that sin. In other words, anytime you get into a, <clears throat> a private setting or a certain area or you feel a little depressed or you feel a little down, lonely, or you're just unoccupied, because they say an idle mind is the devil's playground. So if you find yourself always idle, normally that's the opportunity to sin. So you get into no, what is known as lasciviousness, which means you have no restraints. You can't find the breaks. You say you're not going to do it, but you do it anyway. You say you're going to stop this week, but you do it anyway. You say enough is enough, but you, you do it again. You say you're going to throw away your rose toy. You throw it away, but then you order three more. Think about that. That's lasciviousness. You can't find the breaks. And once you get into that, you might end up getting into a reprobate mind. And that's why it's so difficult to overcome your sins. The Bible says, let not sin, therefore, have dominion over you. Sin is not supposed to have dominion over you. Repent and turn from it. Occupy your mind with the word of the most high. Anytime you feel like sinning, find the scriptures. Get in the presence of the most high. Start praising the most high because the devil is trying to lead you back into darkness. You know what I mean? Overcome the evil. You know, overcome the evil. I understand when you want to do good, evil is present. Even Paul talked about that. Even when I would want to do good, the evil is present with me. Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of this death? It's in the scriptures that I was just finished quoting. You know what I mean? You overcome through the word of the most high. You got to apply the scriptures. It's the only way. He said, for all have sinned. So that means that we're all sinners in need of God's grace. No, that's talking about from the Garden of Eden. See, when the scriptures talk about for all have sinned, it's not talking about you today. It's talking about when sin enter the world because of the so-called black woman. That's right. The black woman brought sin in the world. Just in case you don't know that, read the Bible. According to the scriptures, Eve was the one who got deceived and brought sin in the world. It's in the scriptures. She was in the transgression, period. There's no way around that. Now, once that happened and Adam took of the fruit, that's when it was sealed. So now everybody that's born after are born directly in the sin. That's why it says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Because there was no hope. That's why the most high sent the savior. But because Kirk Franklin is uneducated, because Kirk Franklin don't know the law, because Kirk Franklin is a novice in the faith, he don't know what it means to fall short of the glory of God. You understand? We were doomed and lost in our sin because we had no hope. This is why the children of Israel had to offer up burnt sacrifices because there was no hope. We had to do this to cover our sins. But when he sent the Messiah, he redeemed us from the curse of the law. But because Kirk don't know the law, he's quoting scriptures and misinterpreting what it says. It's not saying, for we all sin and fall short of the glory. If that's the case, why are we in church trying to dance and sing for the Lord if we have fallen short? If we've fallen short and we're on our way to hell, why are we attending church and why are we trying to live holy if we already fell short? It don't make no sense. You have to repent. Repent from your sins. To repent means to turn away. To repent mean you looking at it and you turn away. That's what it means to repent. Turn away from your sin. It's just that simple, man. I don't know why people make this so difficult to understand. Let's get back to the tapes. If we were not sinners, Jesus wouldn't have had to come. Mm -hmm. You know, if he... But he already came. He already came. He already was sacrificed, right? So guess what? Guess what? That means that now that scripture don't apply. So when you read the scriptures, you got to know what it means. When it says, for we all have sinned and fell short of the glory, 
that was before we got the savior. Everybody else that is born have the opportunity to live a perfected life in holiness. But because of religion, they make us think that it's impossible to live right. It's like I could be telling you to overcome your sins and people will be like, Ringo, come on, fam, you sin somewhere. You got to be sinning with something. No, there ain't no sinning going on because it's a choice. It's a choice. You choose to sin. First of all, you got to know what is a sin. What is a sin? What is a sin? Do you know? First of all, not obeying the most high is a sin. So in order to know what is a sin, you got to read the book. Anything that is unrighteous is, is a sin. Rebelling against the law, statutes, and commandments is a sin. You understand? The commandments clearly tell you. And there's many things all throughout the Bible. So if you're obeying everything, it's, it's normal. People be making it seem like obeying God is the most difficult thing you could do. It's easy. It's easy. If you're a practitioner of the truth, it's easy. People be making it seem like it's so difficult. It's so hard to live righteous. When you find out that you're going to hell, trust and believe you're going to get your act together. You're going to get your act together. You know what I mean? Let me bring that out because somebody brought it out. That sin is the transgression of the law. Let me bring it out. Uh, shout out to Dion Grace. Dion Grace pretty much brought out brought that out. Let me get the the actual scripture. <clears throat> Let me see. Because we have to understand this, man. See, um, Dion understand the scriptures, and that's something that. Everybody must know. Everybody must understand this. Let me bring this out. That's first John, I believe, right? I got it here already. <clears throat> because we have to understand what sin is. A lot of us just don't know. We just think everything is a sin. I remember coming up as a kid in them old Christian churches, man. Everything. They used to say playing videos was video games was a sin. I'm like, I can't play Nintendo. They would say it's a sin. You're sinning against God by playing Super Mario Brothers. Could you believe that? <laughs> Crazy stuff, fam. But uh, we got to read read this, right? It says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So if you don't know the law, then you ain't going to know what is a sin. Once you understand the law, once you understand the commandments, which you should know if you're following the most high, I mean, how you following the most high and you don't even know his law? You don't even know the truth. It don't make no sense. <laughs> you got to know what's going on in this Bible that they don't want you to read, you know? And Satan do not want you to read the Bible. Didn't see us as sinners. He could have loved us without dying for us. He died for our sins. And so if we're all sinners, then that means that everybody's in the pot together needing the same love and needing the same grace and needing the same. Notice the same love, needing the same grace, but nobody's repenting. The Bible say, teaches us to repent. Why, why aren't these people repenting? Why is everybody still needing grace? I told you what grace is from a job's perspective. If you're following God and you know the Bible, why haven't you repent of your sins? Because you don't want to. So you're not going to make it to the kingdom. And that's how I see it. That's how you feel? Yes, sir. Okay, so you uh, you don't have a problem with it. Uh-oh. What I see it is exactly as the way that I would see every one of us is that we're all sinners needing grace. Wow. And so more than, more than seeing a person as an ugly person or a person that 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 this sin is on top of this mountain and this sin is down along the valley i believe that 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 if the bible calls anything a sin it's listed in the same category as you would list pride uh -huh. as you would list hate mm -hmm. wow. as you would list any other thing 
And uh-huh. so that's why I say that we're all in the same pot together and we're all needing the same love and we're all needing the same grace. There's a lot of, um, in the church, there's a lot of people who are also homosexual Uh-oh. Uh, mm-hmm. that you, you see constantly uh, that are... And that's my point. Yeah. My point is that we all, it's that we're all looked at the same lens. It says, for all have sinned. Mm-hmm. All have sinned, man. You know, you know, when you notice how he's not focusing on the sin of homosexuality or should I say the abomination, he's not even focusing on that. He's trying to include everybody in it by saying he's trying to make it seem like if everybody's out here just sinning and having a good time. If you're truly a believer of the most high, you're not even trying to sin because the seat of the most high is in you. Let me bring that up because people think this is a game. Let me, let me bring that out. I got two scriptures I got to bring out. We cooking tonight, fam. This is a classic already. Let me bring this out. Um, let me see. Um, let me see. All right, that's 1 John. 1 John 3. We, because we bringing all of this out, man. I'm not playing no games tonight, man. I told you already. I'm really serious about this. Very, very serious about this. All right. Mm-mm-mm. All right. Let me see. Let me set this up. Okay. It's all about the scriptures. It's all about the scriptures. That's all I care about is these, these scriptures. All right. We're just going to read up to... Verse 13. Now, notice how patient I am when I'm teaching. True men of the Most High are patient with this truth, and they take their time to break it down because it's the spirit that's moving. It's not me. It's the spirit of the Most High that gives me the ability to break these things down. So whether you're watching me, whether you're watching Brother New Breed, whether you're watching uh, Brother Pastor Dow, um, and any of the other brethren, they break down the truth because they have love for you. It's about loving the people. If we didn't do this for you, that means we don't love you at all. Period. Now, let's get these scriptures up so that we can continue this edifying. Let me see if I can bring this in. All right, I think we read that. Hold on, hold on. There's a scripture missing. Oh, okay. Oh, I never took a screenshot of it. Wait a minute. So many things going on at one time here. Um, Where's, where's that Bible thing at? Okay. I didn't take a screenshot of it. All right. And again, if you're coming into the building and you've been enjoying the stream this far, make sure you click click that like button. Likes are for free. Really appreciate that. We're trying to get to a thousand likes. We need to get to a thousand likes. We want this video to be pushed through the algorithm so it can reach the world. But in order for that to happen, you have to support the work. Right? So now let's get this scripture out there. Revelations. Chapter 22, verse 14 from the King James Bible, it says, Bless are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Why Kirk is not teaching that? And see, ladies, this is why you're supposed to have a righteous man. The Pookie and Ray Ray that you got dealing with, the Pookie and Ray Ray that you got your legs open up for having all his babies, you with the wrong man. Because that guy is not leading you nowhere. Only a man of the Most High can lead you. Only a man of the Most High can teach you. No other man is going to teach you. Do you understand? So if you want to continue going out there hanging with Pookie and Ray Ray, with the thugs and the goons on the block, thinking that, oh, you find yourself a boss, you find yourself a man, you find yourself a loser. If he's not representing these scriptures, if he's not bringing out this truth, he's not a man. If he's not living for the most high, he's not a man. Period. The Bible says, bless are they. 
The word blessed mean empowered to prosper. Blessed or empowered to prosper are they that do what? His commandments. No, Ringo, they that commit sin. Uh-uh. The Bible says that blessed are they that do his commandments. They that do his commandments. Those are the ones that are blessed. You understand? What does the scripture says in the book of um, 1 John 3, 9, I mean 3, 4 says, whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law for sin is the transgression of the law let's see what else we got let's see what else we got fam um according to the book of ecclesiastes 12 13 it says let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear god and keep his commandments why ringo for this is the whole duty of man so the whole duty of man is to keep the commandments of god Right. And that's in Ecclesiastes. Right. That's the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Right. Sin is the transgression of the law. And in Revelations, in order for us to get into the kingdom, to get into them gates, the Bible says, blessed are they that do his commandments. That they might have right to the tree of life and enter through the gates. So if a homosexual did not repent of their sins. Are they going to enter through the gates? Put it in the chat. If a person that practice homosexuality, but they attend the Christian church or church in general, and they do not repent, are they going to have rights to enter through the gates into the kingdom? Based on the Bible, not based on emotions, not based on how you feel, not based on what I say, based on the scriptures that we're bringing out, are they going to enter the kingdom? Because it says, blessed are they that do his commandments. So if a person that is a homosexual is doing the commandments, that means that they repented. They repented and they stopped doing what they've been doing. You know? Right? Right or wrong? So it says that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. See, when you pass away, you're going to want to enter into them gates. We hear a lot. When people die, they'd be like, oh, my family member's looking down on me and they're watching over me. No, they not. No, they not. If you have a loved one that passed away, they're not looking down on you. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but they're not. Everybody that died that's righteous is in Abraham's bosom awaiting the resurrection. Do you understand me? Nobody's in the kingdom dancing and having a good time. Ain't nobody looking down on you, protecting you. None of us are turning into angels when we die. Do you understand? You have to read the Bible and you have to understand what happens when somebody that is righteous die. When you die, you go into uh, a certain place in which you're awaiting the resurrection. And the scriptures kind of talks about this in, in reference to there was a situation where you had a, a, a rich man and a poor man. The rich man died. He went to hell. And the poor man, he went into Abraham's bosom. And um, pretty much the rich man that was in hell wanted the, the men of the most high to warn his brothers that hell is real. And he asked if, if, if Abraham... Uh, if, if was it after Abraham or Moses or whatever, I think it's Abraham, Abraham, if he can give him something to drink or if he can warn his brothers that this place is real. And he says they got, they have the prophets and the teachers and the preachers to uh, pretty much um, teach them. So if they don't believe that's their problem, look it up, look it up in the Bible. I don't got time to go to it because if I keep turning to different chapters, I'm never going to finish this lesson. Right. So now let's look at this next scripture here. Let's bring it out. Let's bring it out, fam, because I'm all about these scriptures. You know what I mean? I eat scriptures for dinner, for lunch, breakfast. It is what it is. First John chapter three, verse eight to 14. It says, he that committeth sin is of the devil. Now, what did it say, ladies and gentlemen? It says, he that committeth sin is of the devil. So if you're a follower of Christ, if you're a follower of the Most High, if you're a believer, if you're a Christian, if you're an Israelite, if you're awakened and you're in the truth, the Bible says, he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Do you see that? 
So when we look at for all have sinned and fall, fallen short of the glory, it's because of the fall of man. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy, destroy the works of the devil. The word destroy means to loosen, to loose you. Whosoever is born of God. Now listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to this. I am not one of these religious hypocrites that come online teaching a false gospel. The Bible says, whosoever is born of God does, doth not commit sin. Did you, did you get that? The Bible says, whosoever is born of God. And for those that don't know, Yah is his name, the most high Yah. Whosoever is born of Yah doth not commit sin. What, Ringo? You mean to tell me if I'm born of God, the Bible says I won't, be, I won't commit sin? That's right, if you're truly born of God. Because it's not in you to do. You might slip up every now and then, but you could overcome that. I don't care who you are, brother, sister, I don't care who you are. You could overcome sin if you really rep the most high. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Why? For his seed remaineth in him. Oh, man. His seed remaineth in him. The seed of truth. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. See, when you're truly born of God, man, you can't even sin. In this, now notice what the Bible is, dis, is give you a distinction between light and darkness, good and evil. In this, the children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Wow. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Now, what does it mean to love your brother? To teach them the truth. It doesn't mean hugs and kisses and emotionalism. Verse 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Now, loving one another means what? To teach one another the truth, to teach one another the laws, statutes, and commandments. Verse 12, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew him, slew he him because he, his own works were evil and his brother's righteousness. Now you know why we have so much black on black crime in, 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 in the community. It's because one of our brothers are evil and the other is righteous. We're still having the Cain Abel effect in the black community today. The spirit of Cain is still living because his seed is still out there. Cain is still jealous of his brother Abel. And this is why we have so many black men killing one another because of this generational curse. You understand? We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother Abide in death. Kirk Franklin do not love the gay community. Because if he did, he would be teaching you the way I'm teaching you. See, if I say I got love for gay people, it's not because of your lifestyle. It's the love of the most high to teach you the truth that you need to repent before it's too late because Kirk Franklin is not going to teach you the truth because he don't care. He made a pact with the devil. Do you understand? He loved money. He don't love you to love people is to teach them the word of the most high. So if I love people, it includes gay people, but it doesn't mean I love your sin. It doesn't mean I love what you do in your bedroom. It means that I love you enough to give you the truth because in order for you to know, in order for you to understand God's love, 
you have to hear from the prophets, the teachers, and the preachers. It's just that simple. And we're not going to be here to sugarcoat anything for you. We're not going to tell you a lie. I'm going to give you the truth. You build bigger buildings than you do take care of the community. That's a sin that, 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 that the Bible calls loving money a mm-hmm. sin. I mean, how many churches and how many, you know, religious institutions do you see that it looks like that we're built, that we're, that we're building buildings, but we're not building people? Notice how he's trying to throw other preachers under the bus when he do and is guilty of the same exact thing. Wow. Some nerve. He have some nerve to talk about preachers building buildings and loving money when he's doing the same thing. And notice this, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't he call out those preachers? Why Kirk Franklin don't call out preachers if he believed that they're making building buildings and millions of dollars and buying Lair jets? Why Kirk Franklin don't expose who these preachers are since he knows who they are? See, he's a hypocrite. He's doing the same thing, y'all. Let let, let me ask you this, because I want to go back to the promise, being promiscuous and the the porn addiction. If you're married, right, and you're within your own home and... You know, I mean, it's in a disrespectful way. Yeah, but, but, yeah, yeah. but you and your life partner wanted to watch porn. Would that right. be sinful? Well, once again, when you look at the list, the reason why I believed mm-hmm. that what I was doing as a young man was wrong is because when I look at the you know word and, yeah. you know, like like the only thing that I have to be able to go upon my life is not what I feel and not what I think, because yeah. feelings can be trusted. I mean, how, I mean, I mean, how many times have you felt like you were going to die on a plane? Or yeah. How many times you felt like you were going to die in a situation? Notice how he continually dance around the question. The brother just asks, if you are a man and you have a woman who is your wife and you want to just watch P-O-R-N, is it wrong? Is it wrong? Notice Kirk Franklin couldn't even answer the question. First of all, Why are you and your woman watching two other people? That's the question that you have to ask yourself. Why are y'all even interested in watching other people get it in? Why? When you could watch yourselves. I mean, heck. We have the technology that we can record ourselves. So if you're a husband and wife and you want to be entertained by all of this stuff, why don't you and your wife make your own flicks and watch that? Come on. I mean, you can't say anything is wrong with that. But why Kirk Franklin didn't say that? Why do people have pleasure watching other people? Think about that. That's where the sin comes in. Because you're not supposed to be doing that. You're not supposed to be watching other people that are uncovered. Why would a man be watching another man get some top and he's enjoying this? Come on. In the process, he's watching another man's phallus. So in a way, you got to think about this. He's he's literally desensitizing himself and getting comfortable watching another man's rod. And he's also involved in homosexuality. There's a lot to this stuff. And this is why P-O-R-N is so readily available online. Because the devil wants to keep you locked in. He want to drain your spirit and your energy. This is why if you're a woman, you're supposed to be making sure that you are with your man at all times. This is not about, oh, your job as a woman is to get it in when you feel like doing it. No. Once your man get excited or he feels some type of way or he wants some You ought to be readily and available to do what needs to be done to make sure that this man is good. Because if not, you're going to have this man secretly watching P-O-R-N, beating the drum, doing what a lot of these guys are doing out here. Just like a lot of women are doing the same thing. A lot of women out here doing all sorts of things with these rose toys and all these different things they buy off AliExpress. You know, you got a lot of Christian women talk about they reading Bibles, but under their mattress, Man, they got all sorts of stuff under their bed. You'd be like, my goodness, it's sad. And remember, Kirk Franklin talked about how he had a a P-O-R-N addiction, right? He keep bringing that up, but he ain't talking about his addiction to homosexuality. He ain't talking about that. That's in the closet. 
inspiration. But you know, you know, because our feelings are always the caboose. Our feelings are never the engine. Yeah. You know, that's why you got to have something that's bigger than your feelings to lead your life. Mm -hmm. Because if we all ran, ran around on what we feel and what we think, you know, it would be chaos and disorder in society. Mm -hmm. And so there's got to be some type of foundation that we can say, okay, what is the rock that I can build my life upon? Now, I humbly have chosen to build my life upon God's word. Now, some people may say, well, it's flawed and, it, you know, and it's been tainted and it can be trusted in man. He said that he builds his life upon the word. The Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10 says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, um, idlers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, that's pretty much homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, uh, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Why Kirk Franklin don't just come out and just say, look, none of you are going to heaven if you are a practitioner of homosexuality and you're in the church. Why can't he just say that straight? Because the only way to make it is you have to repent. Now, look, if you are a person who is a homosexual and that's your lifestyle and that's what you want to be and you don't care about the Bible and you don't care about God, this message is not for you. It's just that simple. It's not for you. You can go and live your life. I don't really care what you do. I don't care. As long as it don't affect me and my family, I don't care. But when it comes to this truth, I got to make sure that you know the real. Because a lot of these people are going to lead you astray. People like Kirk is not going to give you the Bible. Has, you know, he's, he's, he's said this. Rewritten the Bible. Re and, re yeah. re re rewritten this, rewritten uh -huh. that. And, 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 you know, we can, we can argue all day about the manuscripts and about the Greek and the Hebrew. The bottom line is that I've got to trust that God is so powerful and God is so intelligent enough that he has even divine power to protect. Let me see. From the, the, living, the New Living Translation, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10, this is the same scripture, but from the Living Translation, it says, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery. Now, let me, let me break this down. Adultery for a man is when he lay with another man's wife. That's it. There's nothing else. Adultery for a man is when he lay with another man's wife. That is adultery. There is nothing else. If you're a man and you have a wife and you go get another woman and she's single and she don't got no other man, that's not adultery because a man can have more than one wife according to the Bible. Do you understand that? A man can have more than one wife, more than one concubine according to the Bible. Right? Because a lot of times you have women saying that men commit adultery because he got himself another woman. That's not adultery. If the woman is single and she don't got no man and she's not married, it's fair game. Period. Adultery for a woman is when she step out on her husband. Period. Because a woman is not supposed to have multiple husbands. It's not in the scriptures. There is no scriptures in the Bible of a woman having multiple husbands. Right. And there is no scripture in the Bible of a man cheating on his wife because he got another woman. It's not in the Bible. It's not in the book. So it goes on and says commit adultery or male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people like Kirk Franklin or drunkards or are abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, it's very clear that people who do these things are not going to the kingdom. So how could a person be a practitioner of homosexuality, have a relationship that is anti-Bible, live in this way in a church, and the pastor does not quote these scriptures? Why? Why the pastor is not quoting these scriptures. So if you're a person who lived that, that lifestyle, you ought to be concerned if you're at a church and the man of God is not opening that Bible. But instead, he's trying to make you be comfortable 
And the only reason he's doing that is because he want your money. The Creflo Dollars, the TD Snakes, all of those pastors, they just want your money. That's it. I mean, how could Creflo Dollar teach you anything when his daughters are a mess? Do you know how much things I got on his daughters? Do you know his daughters are practitioners of homosexuality? Do you not know that? Do you not know that? I got so much stuff. They be up in clubs, strip clubs. Creflo Dollar daughters be in strip clubs. The pastor's daughters. These people are not in no position to be preaching to nobody. The Bible talks about how a man that can't even take care of his own house is not even fit to lead no church. Because his house is out of order. He's supposed to be taking care of his family. His family is going to hell. He don't got no time to be teaching you nothing when his daughters are out there rebelling. His children that he loves, that he will give us a clean path because... I don't know about anybody here, but anybody who's a father or parent, nobody gives their child a gift on Christmas mm -hmm. that has to be put together and leads that child to have to put it together themselves. Mm. Mm, okay. And so God is not going to give us a life and a purpose and leave it up to us to try to figure out what to do with our lives. Be That's why he gave us the Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. But Kirk is not open in the Bible to teach you nothing. Be very unfair. Okay. That'd be very unfair to create us and then I give us a blueprint on, on what to do with this beautiful thing that we have called life. You mentioned breaking generational curses. Now listen very carefully. Somebody just asked him a question about breaking general curses, generational curses. This is the last video clip that we're going to wrap it up. Let's go. And um, you talked about being a father. Yeah. So how are you breaking the generational curses as a father? She just asked him, how do you break generational curses as a father? Well, how are you leading your son? By trying, to, try, by trying very hard to give them a blueprint. By giving them a blueprint. But really, he's advertising his book. He's not really caring about his children or breaking generational curses. He's advertising his book. He says by giving them a blueprint. That's promotion for his book. By uh, trying to equip them now so that they don't have to make the same mistakes later. Even, even though I said trying to equip them now so that they don't make the same mistakes. How do you equip a homosexual so that they don't make the mistakes again? By giving them the word. But but this guy is not doing it. Kirk is not doing it. I realize that at some point in their lives, they still have those uh, those crossroads in life where they have to choose right. That right won't always just come automatically because all of us are faced uh, with the option to choose wrong or to choose right or to choose the quick way. And uh, hopefully I will have a uh, an investment into their lives so that when they're faced with those uh, those issues, that uh, they will have a very clear manuscript uh, to look at, to be able to see uh, this is the right way to do this. This is the right way to handle business. This is what a man does. This is what a man doesn't do. This wow. is what a father does. Notice he said, this is what a man does. This is what a father does. So why isn't Kirk teaching this to men in the church that are living the alternative lifestyle and teaching the women on what a wife and a woman is supposed to do why he's not teaching them this. This is what a man that says he's a Christian looks like. Uh, not just what he sounds like, not just what he preaches, wow. but this is how it's walked out. This is the blueprint for what that looks like. So where's the blueprint, Kirk? Why you ain't teaching the gay community how a righteous man of God's supposed to walk? Can we talk a little bit about being gay and being um, saved? She said, she asked him the question of, could we talk about being gay and being saved? There is no such thing as being gay and being saved at the same time. That don't even make sense. That don't make sense at all, fam. Listen to what she said. Let's go. The right way to handle business. This is what a man does. This is what a man doesn't do. This is what a father does. This is what a man that says he's a Christian looks like. Uh, not just what he sounds like, not just what he preaches, but this is how it's walked out. This is the blueprint for what that looks like. Can we talk a little bit about being gay and being um, saved in okay. the church? Well, I... Watch he start dancing. I have, have come to believe being raised in a community of the arts. Uh, I have buried many friends. I've had many friends that I've uh, set by their bedside. 
as they died. I, 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 I was a teenager during the 80s. And so uh, I had a chance to live through a lot of the uh, uh, horrific times that, that, that really hit the uh, gay and, and lesbian community. And, and although I am uh, uh, committed uh, as a Christian to to what what I believe scripture says about all of our lifestyles, not just not just a homosexual lifestyle. She asks you a question about the homosexual lifestyle in terms of being gay and saved in the church. This is not about what straight people are doing, Kirk. Answer the question. But a a heterosexual lifestyle, a a lifestyle that uh, that 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 is in an adulterous relationship, a lifestyle that is a envious and jealous. A lifestyle. Do you see how he's dancing? Do you see how he's talking about other things that don't pertain to the question? Do you see how he's just not being straightforward? Do you see how he can't even answer? Come on, man. This guy is not fit to lead nobody. A lifestyle of pride, a lifestyle of, uh, of, of ego that, that we must be able, that if we're going to speak on particular issues in people's lifestyles, we must be able to also model lovingly what that looks like. Uh, how many young men? According to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2 to 5, it says, Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall turn unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Kirk Franklin is not doing that. He's not doing that. He's busy dancing around the questions. He's not even answering the question. There's no, there's no such thing as you being saved and living in sin at the same time. That doesn't even make no sense. You know what I mean? How could you be saved and living in sin at the same time? Uh, can be talked to and communicated with when the sermon is not behind a pulpit, when it's not homophobic, wow. when it's not filled with, with, with evil and hatred or a certain bias because some things may be particularly nasty to you or something that, that something that particularly disgusts an individual, but it's given the same amount of grace and the same amount of love still wrapped in truth that is given to the, the organist who sleeps with all the choir. You know, it, uh, we, 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 we can be hypocritical in our approach and we must be loving in our approach and we must be able to walk out with young men and women what, what a relationship looks like. And that's why I honestly believe that when you talk about uh, same-sex desires, that, that it must be something that cannot be necessarily part of the public square discussion because that will continue to, to polarize the issue because all we will continue to do is to argue and you'll never say anything good enough to satisfy that community you'll never say anything good enough to satisfy this community the, both communities always felt well you should have said more you should have said more hatred or you should have said more love and so it must be something that when the cameras are off and, and when the microphones are turned off that we model out uh, with our brothers and sisters that may be in same-sex desires, heart-to-heart -heart and breast-to-breast. -breast. It must be something that must uh, be done behind the scenes that is a lifelong process. And we must be uh, bold and not afraid to grab the hands of people. Uh, if there is a young man who has questions about his lifestyle and, 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 and he may be struggling with it, if I'm not willing to allow him to come home, have dinner with me, see what a heterosexual man and a home wow. with his children looks like so he can begin to maybe glean from that if he chooses then then if if I'm, if I'm not willing to do that then i need to be quiet wow really i need to shut up and i and i need to put my my gospel on the shelf because if, if i'm not willing to model that out then that then, then all i'm doing is preaching and it's supposed to be action and love wow um, this guy is something else. Be done behind the scenes that is a lifelong process. And we must be uh, bold and not afraid to grab the hands of people. Uh, if there is a young man who has questions about his lifestyle 
and 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 he may be struggling with it. If I'm not willing to allow him to come home, have dinner with me, see what a heterosexual man in a home with his children looks like, so he can begin to maybe glean from that if he chooses. Then Notice the Bible says in Titus chapter one verse ten to eleven, it says, "For there are many unruly." unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. That's Kirk Franklin. You understand? He's dancing around. He's not answering nothing. He's not making any sense. And this is the kind of nonsense that people got to deal with, fam. This is the kind of stuff that people got to deal with, man. Revelations 21, 27. <clears throat> and there shall and there shall in no wise enter in, into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. If your name is not written in that Lamb's book of life, you are not going to the kingdom. You could just forget about it. So if you're a person and you are in that lifestyle and you don't have your name written in that Lamb's book of life, you're not making it to the kingdom because you can't come into the kingdom as a practitioner. It's just not going to happen. You got to repent. You got to repent and be saved. You got to be born again. Understand? And this is what the Christian church don't teach you. The Christian church is filled with lies. You know what I mean? A lot of times people be looking at me like, Ringo, you a Christian? No, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Christian. I'm an Israelite. You understand? I'm an Israelite according to the Bible. There is no religion in the Bible. There is no such thing as Christianity in the Bible. It's not in the book. There is no religion that came from the Messiah called Christianity. It's not in the scriptures. You understand? The Messiah did not come to bring you a religion. He did not come and say, hey, guys, I'm setting up a religion called Christianity, and I need for y'all all to follow it and sign up. You could be a Baptist. You could be a Methodist. You could be a this. It's not in the book. Serious business, fam. So let's get back to the tapes because he's dancing. He's not answering the questions. He's playing and wasting your time. Let's go. And then if, if, I'm, if I'm not willing to do that, then I need to be quiet. If you're not willing that you need to be quiet, you should have been quiet a long time ago because you ain't teaching nobody nothing. I brought out all the scriptures. Really, I need to shut up and I, and I need to put my, my gospel on the shelf. That's what you need to do. You need to repent. You need to just quit. Step down from the ministry. Because if, if I'm not willing to model that out, then, then then all I'm doing is preaching. Wow. And it's supposed to be action and love. Where's the action then? Where's the action, Kirk? Because you're not providing the gay community any knowledge or wisdom from the Bible to tell them about what they're doing. You're afraid to tell them what they're doing. Uh, uh, Christ said it so clearly that, that they will know you're my disciples by your love. No. Not just that, the scriptures also says the tree is known by his or her fruit. And your fruit is dirty. That's right. So it's very clear, ladies and gentlemen, very, very clear that Kirk Franklin is of the devil and he supports homosexuality and he had fallen from grace. He left the faith and he's with the devil. So I hope you enjoy the stream. You know, it's a power pack stream. Isn't it interesting how fast three hours go by when you're watching Ringo TV? How three hours just go by like this instantly. You know what I mean? So if you're in here and you haven't clicked that like button, you know, click that like button so we could get to a thousand likes. You know what I mean? It's very important that you do that. Um, I'm gonna give a few shout outs Those of you that have supported On the cash app Um, Let me see da, 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 da. Shout out to <clears throat> Shout out to Nate Nate for the 40 on the cash app 
Michael, Dwayne. Shout out to Michael for the 20 on the cash app. The dub man moderator for the $90 support. Appreciate you, fam. Michelle for the 10. Michelle for the 10. Nina. Shout out to Nita. Nina for the $50 cash app support. Citizen Soldier. Citizen Soldier 1987 for the 31 on the cash app. James. Shout out to James. James for the 10 on the cash app. Uh, shout out to Fernandez. Fernandez. Miss Fernandez for the $50 support on the cash app. Shout out to Brandon for the 10. James Rod Rogers for the 20. That's about it, fam. Appreciate everybody for sponsoring the work, sponsoring the shows. Um, this entire video is a master class lesson that needs to be shared. Uh, this needs to be put in every church. Um, this needs to be pastors need to watch this video so they can learn how to pastor a church, how to preach to the people. Other biblical scholars and teachers need to look at this so they can review to see how Kirk Franklin failed the church and failed the people. It's one thing to get support from people. It's another thing to give back. And when you're not giving people what thus saith the most high and you're leading them to hell, that's bad business. Kirk Franklin, you are a false prophet. I'm calling you out and I know you see my videos and I know you know who I am. You are leading people astray. You are leading people astray because you're scared to tell them the truth because you're ashamed of God. You're ashamed of the most high Yah because you're embarrassed. You love the world. You love the money. You love it. You love being famous. That's what you love because there's perks of being a part of the world. But the Bible says that if you were of the world, the world would love their own. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What does it profit you? Now, the reason, ladies and gentlemen, why this stream is so dynamic and filled with fire is because this is the original content that I normally always done back in the day in 2006. This is the type of content I did daily, putting all of these preachers out there to make the world know that they're not with God. They're just not. I have proven to you beyond a shadow of doubt that Kirk Franklin supports homosexuality and he have turned from the faith and he denied the Messiah publicly. He denied the faith because he refused to give you the truth. And any man that put his hand to the plow and looked back, he is not fit for the kingdom. So appreciate everybody rocking with the platform. Again, if you didn't click that like button, click that like button so we could get to a thousand, a thousand likes, push this video through the algorithm fast and far so that this truth could get out there. So people that are living the alternative lifestyle can wake up to the truth and see the reality of what's going on. Just because you're a person who's living the alternative lifestyle does not mean that you look at me as if though I hate you. This is about your sin. I've worked around people that were gay. I talked with people that are gay. I got people that are literally living that lifestyle that have struggles and they hit me up in the DMs to tell me how they can get free and i tell them just watch my videos watch my videos repent pray to the most high turn from the people that still do these things if you want to make it to the kingdom you have to repent this is not about putting anybody down this is about the fire of truth 
You have one life and you only have a short time. Now is the time. It is high time. You know what I mean? I got at least at least 12 different brothers that I know of that sent messages regarding situations like this. And they trust me. You know why? Because I don't put their business out there. I don't come out and be like, yo, you know, so-and-so sent me a DM so that, yo, you know what I'm saying? He in the closet and blah. I don't do that. I don't do that. I respect their privacy. They trust me enough to tell me about their business. You know what I mean? You have to repent. You must turn from your sin. It's the only way. And a lot of you ladies, you do this too. You dabble in this world too. You could repent. A lot of you ladies, low key, be getting it in with other women. You gotta repent. Repent. Repent before it's too late. Look at the signs, ladies and gentlemen. Just yet, just the other day, your brother, Big Pokey, out from Houston, Texas. R.I.P. Condolences to his family. He died in front of the world. He just literally died. His number was up. His time was up. And he just died while performing. Just dropped to the floor and died. Don't let that happen to you. That's a sign, ladies and gentlemen. That's a sign to let us know how short life is. He wasn't expecting to die. He was telling the DJ, play something for him so he could rock out. He seems like a cool brother. I don't know nothing about him. Those of you that are from Houston, you know him. You know who he is. You know what he's about. You know about his music. I tried to do my best with my video about it. I tried to be as careful as possible with what I, how I reported the news on that story because a lot of people spending it as a blood sacrifice or this and that. It's not a blood sacrifice, man. That, that brother had either some issues, some health issues, or... He may have taken the potion or whatever the case is. I'm hearing from a lot of people out in Texas. They said it was hot as hell and how he did multiple shows that day. He's a big guy. So there's a possibility that he was exhausted, probably had dehydration, probably had cardiac issues. There's a lot of problems that could have been happening in that brother's life. And for whatever reason, his time was up. You still here. So being that you're still here, it's time to repent. It's time to repent. Do you understand? It's time to repent. I just saw a notification pop up on my phone. Somebody said, these laugh tracks are annoying. <laughs> if my laugh tracks are annoying, Kane, why are you watching my videos? <laughs> just stop watching my videos and go find another channel. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? So in case you're listening to this one right now, I hope that that pretty much answered your question. And I'm he let me see what video they responded to just so I can know exactly what's going on, because it's crazy when people leave these kind of comments about you laugh the tracks is annoying and just stop watching the videos. Uh, that was an old video that I made on. She had a train ran on her at 15 and encouraged ladies to be a 304 reaction. That particular video. The person said, let me respond to them. Uh, so stop viewing. <laughs> Just stop viewing the videos. <laughs> you know what I mean? People people tripping. I just responded to them. <laughs> Normally, I don't ever respond to people, but I just felt that they needed a response. Maybe God is trying to tell them something. I mean, if you're annoyed by my laughter tracks, why are you viewing me? It doesn't even make no sense. So I appreciate everybody coming through. I got a lot of work to do. Um... You know what I'm saying? But hey, this was a classic. This is a classic stream. Now, again, to the people that are out there in that community, the most high want you to repent. See, I'm not here cracking jokes and playing games. You have to repent. You cannot say that you are following the Lord and in secret, you're still committing these sins. I don't know what pastor you have. I don't know what church you attended to that made you feel comfortable that it's cool for you to be in the choir, in the pew, and you still doing X, Y, and Z on the low. The most high don't work like that. You're going to have to give an account 
for the things that you're doing in this earth. Now is the time to repent. So if you're a woman and you dibble dabble with women and society make you feel like there's nothing wrong with you, that you were born this way, you perfectly fine. You were not born that way. You made a choice. Either you were violated when you were young by someone and you adapted that lifestyle or you just made the choice to just get involved. Just like a lot of these young guys, they got violated when they were a kid and for whatever reason, they just did whatever they did and continued down that road. You were not born this way. I don't, I don't care what the world is telling you. It's a lie. Because the Most High would not be telling you that this is wrong and it's an abomination and he's making people be born. There is such thing as generational sins, generational curses, where a man is so sinful that his seed is now weak in areas that he was weak in. In other words, let's say, for example, your pops struggled with homosexuality, but he never repented. Well, if he never re repented and he have offspring, then what happened is his children now will struggle with these sins. It doesn't mean they were born to be this way. It means that they are carriers of a generational curse. And this is what people are misunderstanding. It's not that you were born gay. You were born in sin because of the sins of your father and mother. And this is why you have struggles that you're fighting against and you can't understand why you have these urges. See, a lot of you, your father didn't tell you that he was gay. Your mother never told you that she dibble dabbled with women. She never told you this. So you, you're struggling with it now and you're ashamed and you hide and everything and you don't want to tell nobody because you don't want nobody to judge you. You know what I mean? But you attend churches that make you feel good. And, and none of these churches are open in the Bible to tell you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not here to support your lifestyle. I'm here to give you the truth so you can make it to the kingdom. Because everybody's going to have to give an account for their life. Everybody has struggles with different sins. Everybody have issues. But that doesn't mean everybody is sinning every single day. When you're truly born of God, you're not sinning. I promise you, when you truly are repping the most high, you don't wake up in the morning thinking about, hey, what sin I'm going to do today? No, you're trying to live righteous. You're trying to do the best of your abilities. You know what I mean? And if you did mess up, you repent to the most high and you get back on track. But the thing is, in order to understand sin, you have to think of it like electricity. Let me break this thing down for you. I have an understanding of electricity, basic electricity. So I know about surge protectors, circuit breakers, current volts. I understand the language. I respect it because I know it's very dangerous. You can die if you don't understand these things. This is why a person that's an electrician uh, they would know way more than me. I only I understand basic electricity, but an electrician, they understand the real serious knowledge. But let me give you the core. When you look at the uh, circuit breaker in your house, it's that little switch in that box. Uh, it can shut down the main power, the the main um the main line that uh, provides all the energy. If you have, let's say, for example, an air conditioner and when you plug in your air, your, your air conditioner and you turn it on and it trips your breaker, right? The problem is not the outlet. The problem could be the air conditioner. The reason why the circuit breaker is tripping is because there could be a faulty wire in that air, that AC that can cause a fire. So the circuit breaker trips off to prevent a fire. Do you understand me? So now there are different ways you can know what the problem is. You can unplug the AC, plug a radio, a blender, something else in the same outlet. If that blender works perfectly fine, if that radio works perfectly fine, then guess what? The AC needs to be changed. You can't keep clicking on the circuit breaker or else you're going to cause a fire. You have to recognize the signs. When the circuit breaker clicks off, it means you got to get rid of something. In order to understand sin, the circuit breaker is the spirit of the Most High. He's going to convict you to make you realize that something ain't right. 
Anytime you bend to that sin, the circuit breaker is going to click off. It's going to shut the power down. You try to turn it back on, it shuts off again. Why? Because you have to remove the AC. Once you remove the AC, buy a new air conditioner and plug it in. I promise you, if it's a brand new, clean air conditioner that was never used, it's not tainted, it's not destroyed, it's not defiled, it's going to work perfectly fine. Do you understand me? The, cir the circuit breaker is a safety. It protects the house. Understand the signs. Don't keep plugging in items that makes the breaker trip. It is a sign that something is wrong. You might have an iron that you plug in and it trips the breaker. If that keep happening, throw the iron away and buy a new one. Something's wrong. Things break down. Do you know you can buy AC and it, it breaks down in one year? You didn't do nothing. You never dropped it. It's just a faulty AC. Things happen in the factories. Buy a new one. Don't risk your house burning down because you keep clicking on and off that breaker box. Do you know how powerful that is when you click that switch on? That's powerful. You don't play around with that stuff. When that breaker switch off, it is a sign telling you there is danger, impending destruction. So listen and learn of this analogy I'm trying to paint here for you. When the most high is triggering your heart that something ain't right, make sure you're listening. Make sure you change. So repent today and be born again. That being said, we're going to get up on out of here. Ringo TV Reactions. Appreciate everybody getting us to a thousand likes. We hit a thousand likes, fam. Salute to everybody making that happen. We had a thousand likes. Salute to everybody in the chat, everybody in the clouds for making that happen. Hope you enjoyed the stream and you were edified and you got something out of this. This video is an expression of God's love. This is what God's love look like. We have to repent and get right with the Most High. Peace and blessings to the chat. Peace and blessings to the mods. Salute to everybody that's rocking with the platform. Without you, without your support, I won't be able to do this. You keep me motivated. You know what I mean? You keep me inspired. The energy that you provide, pulling up at the shows, because I know a lot of people need to hear this kind of message. You're tired of the watered down message. You want to hear the truth. Finally, the truth. So if you are catching the replay, hey, just do that. Watch the whole show straight through. Don't just watch one, one minute, three minutes. Watch the whole show. You know what I mean? If you got time, look at it on the weekend. Look at it while you're driving to work in, in segments. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Create a playlist and put the videos in there. Find all the videos that I have and put them in a playlist so you can digest these videos. They're full of life. They're full of truth. These things will change you, man. Trust and believe, man. If you knew who I was back in the day, man, in these streets, man, listen, man, the most high changed me, bro. He changed me. Trust and believe that. You know what I mean? Without the most high, I'm nothing. But with him, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So we're going to be back later on in the morning with more powerful content, more reaction videos, more truth. Uh, salute to uh, Brother New Breed, you know what I'm saying, for putting in work, putting out truth. It's very important that you brothers also subscribe to him. You know what I mean? He's another brother in, in the truth that uh, is awakening the people. It's very important. You know what I'm saying? All of you that's here, make sure you subscribe and support him if you're not subscribed already. Also, Pastor Dow. You know what I mean? Make sure you subscribe to Pastor Dow. Make sure you catch his uh, services that he do. Um, a lot of the information is to edify and support you. You know what I mean? Also, support Rollo. You know what I mean? Another brother that is putting out truth, you know what I'm saying? Floridine talk, you know what I'm saying? Salute to Rallo. Make sure you support his channel as well. 
you know? Everybody's had everybody's at a different level. You know what I mean? Everybody have wisdom. You know, so support all the brothers. You know? And that's about it, man. So y'all be safe out there. Be safe driving. Be safe on your job. Keep the most high first. It is what it is. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, Ringo TV Reactions, and click that like button, notification bell for more content. I'll catch you in the next one. We out of here. Peace. If you like our content, consider supporting via cash app at dollar sign Ringo TV Raw. Become a patron on patreon.com for exclusive video content not shown on YouTube. You could also support through PayPal at paypal.me slash Ringo TV Raw. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new content. Follow me on Instagram at Ringo TV Raw. This is Ringo TV Reactions. The only channel on YouTube bringing you the truth. 100% raw and uncut. I'm out. Peace.